Hey you! If you're enjoying Skyline Rem and want to help make it happen, you can apply to join our backstage team in the description of this video. If you don't have the time or means, don't sweat it. Subscribe, leave a like, and enjoy the video instead. You and Alice both stumble to your feet as you rapidly blink away the bright light that previously consumed your vision. You hear Alice groan next to you, lifting a hand up to her temple in irritation as she tries to stabilize herself. Uh, all right. I'm officially putting that on the top of my list of things I'm never doing again, she states, looking around in confusion before turning her attention to you. You okay, Rex? I think I'm gonna hurl... Well, don't! I don't want to be stuck in a room with your vomit! She snaps in response, quickly stepping away from you and putting your hands up. You place your own hands on your knees, the nausea from whatever magic you just experienced making your head spin. Slowly, the feeling starts to dwindle and fade away, and your eyes begin to focus on the marble ground beneath you. You push yourself upright, regaining your balance once more and shaking your head. Okay, okay. I'm good. You're not gonna hurl? Erlis narrows her eyes, still not daring to take another step closer until you confirm it. No, I, I, I think I'm okay. Whoa. Your focus shifts away from Ellis as you take in your new surroundings. These definitely aren't the same ruins you were just in. These ones are bigger and more spacious. Although the same statue as previously would remain standing in the center of the broken down pillars. You crane your neck back to look up at the ceiling, following these curves and architectural details down to the large door directly in front of you and Alice. Uh, where are we? You're asking me? Alice crosses her arms, frowning back at you. Right, let me just take out my all-knowing encyclopedia real quick. She pats herself down sarcastically. Oh, wait, silly me, I don't have one! Hey! You're the one that actually comes from this world! That doesn't mean I know what's going on 24-7! Need to remind you that we just fought a bunch of dark fog monsters in some creepy crypt, so a one-of-a-kind gemstone from some rival pirates, and then inserted said gemstone into some random statue on an island in the middle of nowhere! And wouldn't you know it? Now we're somewhere completely different, and I have no idea where here is! She sighs after her statement putting her hands on her hips and hanging your head in defeat. <sighs> we don't even have any treasure to show for it. Well, I mean, th the diamonds should just be right. Your statement gets, out of your th gets cut off in your throat as you look back up at the statue, directing your gaze towards the gem-shaped slot in the center of the figure's chest. 
on the island, you inserted the perfect diamond into that slot and it brought you here. But now that slot is just as empty as before. The diamond's gone. Yeah, Alice confirms your thoughts. Diamond's gone, Rex. A priceless gemstone. And you decided to lose it by putting it in a weird statue. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> At least we're not stuck in that cave anymore, all right? It, it, it's teleporting like that common in Rem. I can't say it's normal for people to jump from point A to point B, no. Nella states. At least, I've never heard of something like that happening. Maybe we're the first people to do it. Who knows? Not me! You frown, turning your attention away from Alice as she rants instead of... Instead, ta and instead taking in more of your surroundings. The same material as the island's shrine are present in the structure, but on a grander scale. Although you can't make out too much past the large door. And there are a couple of faint, glowing crystals illuminating the chamber. You faintly hear Alice's boots as she trails behind you, looking up at the door as well. It looks kind of like that other shrine, but... Uh, well, fancier. Uh-huh, Alice says mindlessly. Definitely looks like we're in some more ruins. Although, they seem weirdly intact. Great! More ruins! Relax, moron! Alice sighs. I don't see any evil smoke this time, so I think we're good in that regard. She sighs. Too much has happened in the past 24 hours. Let's just take this one step at a time and focus on finding a way out of here or something. The sooner we're outside, the sooner we can find out just where in Rem we are. She walks forward, approaching the large door in particular. Well, that looks promising. What it looks like is our only way forward. Let's go ahead and see what's behind these doors, huh? She grins at you. Right. Holy. Whoa. Hey guys, glad to see you're still here. Thank you for the raid, Cam. And Queen, thank you for the five subs! You guys are so sweet. Hey, how are we doing? Hey, y'all doing okay? What's up, Yamato? Hey, Mogi. Hi, Do. Hi, Tori. Hi, Grumly. Hi, Ven. Hi, Silver. Hi, Ava. We bring a feast of food. Nice. Hey, Rune. Hi, Lily Pad. Hi, Volpiri. Hi, Cat Pep. Hi, Wolfie Gray. Hi, Timber. Hello again, Queen. Hi, CS World Lord. Hello, Crazy God Lover. Hi, Quintus. <laughs> Hi, Graham. Hi, Toast. How's the gauntlet? Oh, good thing I didn't lose that in the tumble, I guess. And it doesn't look like the focus broke when I slammed my face into... What is this, marble? Yeah, uh, where? Huh? It's like two seconds have passed by. We put in that that gemstone, and then the next thing I knew, I was free-falling three feet. Hey, headphone gal. I, um... This is a huge chamber. Oh. Hold on. Let me take this out. <clears throat> and it's just like that. A little f orb. Hm. I'll leave that out for now, I guess. Let's get back from our birthday party. Oh, I hope that was fun. Three feet's better than out of the sky, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I have to agree with you there. Uh, I wish I could just slow down for a second, though, and figure out where I'm at. One second I'm on a pirate ship, the next second I'm stranded on an island, next second I'm in some deep, dark crypt, and now I'm wherever this is. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, we've kept Alice waiting long enough. Alice crosses her arms, looking up and down at the door. I'm gonna get a better angle. <laughs> looking up and down at the door. That is some door. Looks pretty old, too. Maybe even ancient. She frowns. Let's just hope it's not too ancient to open. She turns back to you as you approach. Well? Ready to crack this door open? 
I think we're ready. Let's do it. That's what I like to hear. All right, you take one side and I'll take the other. She states, cracking her knuckles. Got it. I missed the button. Oh. What the hell? There we go. You walk over to the left side of the door while Ellis walks over to the right. You place both your hands on the door before bending your knee, pushing against the door as hard as you can. You put your entire body weight into the push, straining against the large slabs of stone which creak and groan as you force them to open. The door would slowly begin to give, causing you to almost stumble as the large slabs rotate outward. Ah! You find yourself falling forwards, your grip on the door slipping, but you manage to catch yourself before you tumble to the floor. Alice walks forward, standing at your side to look up at the new room before you. Okay. This has got to be a new record of cool things I've seen in a day. What? What's- Oh. Oh, whoa. Oh. <laughs> what? Uh... You look back at Ellis, who gazes up at the arch ceiling in amazement. Seriously, how many cool ruins can two people find in a single day? I mean, it's like you said, at least this one doesn't seem to have any evil dark fog. <laughs> right. She chuckles at your statement. Even the atmosphere feels so different from the mausoleum. You could swear that you feel a distinctive energy in the air around you. Before, it felt like the hairs on the back of your neck were standing on end, but now you feel... strangely secure. Is this what the magic here feels like? Hey, uh, Alice? You know that magic feeling in the crypt? I think I'm getting it again, but... Feels warm, right? Alice completes her thought. Like you feel almost safe standing in here. You nod in agreement, and Ellis crosses her arms. Yeah, I'm getting it too. It's pretty weird. You won't see me complaining. After everything, I could use a little bit of security. She looks back forward. Let's keep looking around. Maybe we can find something useful before we make our way out of here, or wherever the exit is. Right, right. Good point. This is huge. That ceiling just goes up. I can't even see where it ends. Huh. Whoa. Whoops. <laughs> I accidentally was a little too nimble on my feet there. What is this? Is that water? That is actual water. Oh, wow. You walk down towards the water beneath the ruined bridge. You look into the pool, your reflection gazing back at you curiously and thoughtfully. After almost a week, you've grown accustomed to waking up to those uniquely silver eyes. Your appearance hardly gives you any pause anymore. Well, then again, it's never concerned you anyway. Despite all you've experienced, it's still just you. You seat yourself and lean over the pool. Ellis walks up behind you, kneeling to sit on her knees, staring into the pool herself. She hesitantly reaches out her hand, allowing her fingers to touch the surface before she quickly withdraws. God, it's freezing cold! She shakes her hand out in slight discomfort, frowning at the water. Hey, you think it's clean? What? How would I know? She looks over at you, confusion. I can't exactly test that sort of thing, you know. She crosses her arms. Why do you ask? I'm thirsty. But don't drink it! She immediately snaps, putting her arm in front of your chest to block you from getting closer to the pool. You're seriously telling me that your first thought was to drink the mysterious liquid at the bottom of these random ruins? When you don't answer, she groans, massaging the bridge of her nose. You really are a moron, you know. Well, can you blame me? I haven't had anything to eat since those coconuts on the island. She frowns at your response. <sighs> you think the guy who just casually gets crushed by a Kraken tendril wouldn't be so needy for water. And just because I can't die doesn't mean I don't get thirsty. Ellis shakes her head, sighing. 
Well, I guess it wouldn't really hurt even if you did drink it then. Just let me know if you start to die, yeah? She scoots away, motioning to the pool. All yours. I'll be sure to keep you informed. You inch closer to the pool, leaning over the edge of the bridge and placing both of your hands into the water. Just like Alice said before, the water's cold, but not painfully so. You carefully cup your hands together, lifting some of the water out of the pool and bringing it to your lips to drink it. The flavor is... nothing. It tastes just like normal water. Alice narrows her eyes as you finish your drink. Well... You don't look dead. It's good. It's pretty refreshing, too. Ah, uh, what the heck. I guess if you're still talking, it's not poisonous or something, Alice states, shuffling over to the edge of the bridge to take a drink herself. You watch her follow your lead for a moment, cupping her hands under the pool to bring some of the water up to her mouth. A moment of silence passes between the two of you as you try to rehydrate yourselves. Dripping water and distant winds echo through the tall, ruined chamber. How's your face? Alice breaks the silence, leaning back on her hands and looking over at you. Huh? A gash on your cheek. Does it still hurt? She emotions the small bandage on your face. You bring a hand up to it, the memories of your injury quickly flooding that gear into your mind. In an instant, you remember the vault. The mysterious sealed door, the dark fog, and the creatures behind it. You remember the misty wolf that attacked you, scratching your face, and then the nothingness that followed. You're not sure what happened after that. The shock of your injury got the better of you, apparently. It still hurts. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Pretty nasty cut, if you ask me. Alice pauses when you don't immediately respond. She weakly chuckles, reaching out to place a reassuring hand on your shoulder. Hey, chin up. Think of it this way. Normal people don't usually come across that kind of thing, you know? Can't say I ever heard of someone stumbling across creepy mist monsters and living to tell about it. And you got out okay! I'd say you're pretty lucky. What, lucky? But didn't a Kraken attack the ship the day I woke up? Okay, so maybe lucky isn't the right word. Alice immediately backpedals. Look, that's not the point, okay? Point is you got through all that stuff in one piece. Plus, you still got me with you, right? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. And if we do run into more trouble, it's not like you have death to worry about when you can literally come back to life. Nellis pauses. Uh, of course, I can't say the same for myself. You better not be above taking a hit or two for me, Rex. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Good. Alice huffs, crossing her arms and standing. Come on, get up. We still have to find a way out of this place, remember? We can't spend all day sitting around. Alice looks toward a couple of the smaller doors. Maybe we could try and open a couple of those before we try the big one at the end? What do you think? Yeah, sure, we can give that a shot. <sighs> huh. The entire chamber. Thank you for the hydrates. I think I've hydrated thoroughly, though. <laughs> it's a fountain. Huh. Well, here's a doorway. <laughs> yeah, that stairs okay. It, it, it's trying. Hmm. You approach the door carefully, placing your palm against its surface. The marbled stone is cool beneath your feet, your hand. You slowly start to push against the door, using more and more force to try and open it, but it doesn't budge. You observe the lock in the center of the door. It must still be locked. Maybe there's a key around here somewhere? Hmm. <laughs> that, that's a, um, that is a locked door. They're not getting in here without a key, I guess. Let's see what else is in this chamber. There's the other half of the room, but... Hmm. But these stairs. Here we go. There's a second door. 
Once again, you approach the door and begin to push against it. This time, you try and lean your entire body weight into the door. Still, it doesn't budge, just like the last one. This door must still be locked as well. But you still haven't found any keys. Hmm. Maybe they're just sitting around? Keys. Maybe they're in the door. That is a cool door. And huge. Jesus. Alright. Let's see. What about this one? You approach the door, placing both hands firmly against the marbled stone and pushing with all your might. Nothing happens. Hear Alice grow behind you. Ah! Uh, this isn't getting us anywhere! All these doors are locked! She walks up to the door herself and gives it a swift kick in frustration. Immediately afterwards, she would grimace, shaking out her leg in slight pain at her action. Eh, pretty sturdy too! <laughs> God, does that hurt? I haven't seen any keys around either. I mean, actually, I haven't really seen anything. Alice narrows her eyes at the door. So weird. This place has got to be ancient, yet the seals on all three of those doors are in perfect shape. She looks around, her eyes falling on some identical doors on the other side of the chamber. Same probably goes for those doors over there. How do you know if the place is ancient? Don't get me wrong, I can't really say for certain. But looking at the architecture and the state of some of the stone, I'd place it at a, maybe a couple centuries old. She shrugs. I'm not exactly a historian, so don't take my word for it. And it's not like gonna collapse on us, right? Alice blinks at your statement, slowly turning to stare at you with a horrified expression. Hey, Rex, that's the kind of statement you don't say out loud. She looks up towards the ceiling in a paranoid manner. Uh, that's a new fear unlocked, thanks to you. Okay, uh, new topic! You look around desperately, trying to find something different to focus on. Eventually, your eyes land on the sconces which jut out from the walls. Within the metal confines of the sconces would be a moderately sized crystal, faintly glowing and illuminating the chamber. You can't help but find your gaze fixated on the crystal sconces. As you walk closer to it, the warm feeling of magic gets stronger. Are these crystals producing magical energy? Glowing crystals? Hmm? Alice glances up towards you as you motion to the crystal. Oh, yeah. It's magic, all right. She walks over the crystal casually, rubbing her head. I'm starting to feel like magic's everywhere in this world. I mean, you're not too far off, Alice states, tossing your bangs out of her eyes. Magic can be found in uh, pretty much everything. You just gotta know where to look. Well, then why doesn't everyone use it? I guess it just depends on preference, she sighs. Some people might prefer to just solve their problems with a sword and shield, and others might not have the means to practice. She crosses her arms, looking down at the ground and kicking a pebble off the edge of the balcony you're both standing on. Reason doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, whether they choose to use it or not doesn't stop magic from existing. It's everywhere. So, it's self-sustaining. Alice nods at you. I mean, it's gotta be. Take these crystals, for instance. She turns her attention back to the crystal sconce. Magic in them must have been pretty powerful, especially if it's still active after all this time. I'd even bargain there's gotta be something in here that's sustaining the flow of magical energy. Like what? Beats me. It's not like I'm an expert on the subject. And even if I were, this place is so ancient that whatever no modern knowledge we have now probably doesn't apply. She looks back at the locked door behind you. Plus, all these locked doors definitely aren't helping. You won't be able to learn much more if we can't find a way through. Eh. Doesn't really matter. For now, let's just keep looking around. Maybe with your dumb luck, we'll stumble across a key into one of these side chambers. Or a scary monster. What did I say about not saying stuff like that out loud, Rex? She snaps her head in your direction, giving the most irritated expression she can muster. <laughs> uh, whoops. <sighs> so these things are cool. Look at them. You ever see anything like this? Glowing crystals. What do you make of it, chat? 
That's pretty cool. Maybe we should pocket one of them. Nah. We'll leave it there. Huh. So I've said before, once you say something, it happens. It's practically your power, if anything. Um. <laughs> I want a million dollars. <laughs> hmm. Keep looking around. What's this? It's like a balcony of some kind. Oh, that's the chamber we were in. I see. Dang, this place is huge. Like, actually enormous. Huh. As you continue to follow the path, you can't help but look out towards the open chamber in awe. You walk over to the railing, leaning over to look directly below you at the bridge, cutting across the cool waters beneath it and extending towards a similarly ornate door as the one previously opened. Ellis was right earlier. This place is truly impressive. Then again, it's not like you've seen anything remotely close to it in your world. Skyscrapers are nothing on ancient magical ruins. Yo, Rex, Alice calls behind you. Come look at this. You glance back towards her curiously, raising an eyebrow. She nods her head up towards an archway above you both, dividing the balcony into two, one overlooking the main chamber and one overlooking the room holding the mysterious woman's statue. You narrow your eyes as the dim crystal light illuminates a couple of carved words in the archway. It seems most of the message has worn away over time, but you can still make out a couple of words. For when you sleep in one world... You awaken in another. Pretty weird, huh? Ellis asks, frowning. I don't think I've ever heard of something like that. Sounds religious, though. She pauses. Kind of reminds me of you. I mean, when you were freaking out, didn't you say you come from another world and just randomly showed up in this one? <laughs> They're about as weird as these ruins, if you ask me. I don't know if I should take that as a compliment or an insult. Alice moves on with her own investigation, ignoring your statement. Hmm. Looks like this part of the balcony overlooks that statue room. So he must have just come from there and wrapped around up to here. While she talks, however, your eyes wander back up to the archway's mysterious statement. Alice had a point. It seems to reference how you came to Ren in the first place. But how would a statement like that be found in ancient ruins? What did Ellis mean by religious? Hang on, you said the message sounded r religious? Huh? Wait, are you being serious right now? She looks back, raising an eyebrow. You're telling me you don't know about gods? Once again, you managed to prove you're not from around here. She walks over to you. You must have heard people say, oh my gods, or for unity's sake, on Ren's ship, right? Oh yeah. I just never really knew why they were saying that. To make a really long explanation short, Alice starts, there's some really powerful beings in this world, and one of the biggest ones is named Unity. She's kind of like a goddess over everything in Rem. She stops, frowning for a second to look in back into the statue room. Come to think of it, that statue in there kind of looks like a depiction of her, too. So you think this place could have been built for Unity? Maybe. I mean, she's been around a while, so it matches up with how old this place could be. However, Ellis shakes her head. But we're not here for that. We obviously aren't finding anything in here, so let's just focus on leaving for now. Well, what about the other doors? This place seems pretty sealed shut. You can be my guest trying to open the other doors, but something tells me they won't budge just like the rest of them. She crosses her arms, looking out towards the bridge in the main chamber. Her eyes follow its path before landing on the large, ornate door on the opposite wall. Let's go and try open that door over there. My guess is that it's probably your ticket out of here. I think I'm done exploring these ruins for a while. I guess, yeah, since there's nothing else around here. That door... Hmm. 
Huh. So there are gods. And that's one of them. Nah, whatever. Let's head out. Let's see. Locked? Yep, locked. Yeah, this one's locked too. Okay. Hmm. Bridge. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess it's just give this door a try. Hmm. Alice looks up at the ornate door, cracking her knuckles. As you approach it, she glances in your direction. All right, then. It's just like last time. Let's get this over with. Right. You place your hands firmly against the door, and Alice does the same. On three. Ready? One, two, three. You push against the door with all your might, feeling it slowly begin to rotate and open. Alice would be at your side, practically leaning against the door to force it open herself. It begins to creak and groan as it is pushed outward, a cool breeze passing by. You stumble, regaining your footing as you lose your grip on the door. Ah, ah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good this time. You look up quickly to see what was beyond the door, and your gaze is met with a dim staircase leading upwards. You can faintly make out light at the top, and you can hear wind whistling through the corridor. Ellis walks to your side. Stairs. That's actually promising, she comments. Where there are stairs, there's an exit. She turns to you. Ready to head up? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Let's head up. All right, then. She grins. Come on, idiot. We're collecting dust just standing around here. Without hesitation, Alice would begin to jog up the steps. What? Uh, Alice, wait for me! <sighs> okay. Let's see where this leads. Ah. Uh. How many steps are in the... Oh... Whoa... You look out at the landscape before you. You can't tell if you're breathless because of the steps or the beauty of the environment. Plains and hills stretch out as far as the eye can see, with tall trees dotting the grassy inclines and valleys. You notice a couple of bunnies hopping around the vibrant spring grass, and some bees flocking around fields of tulips and flowers. The sky is a deep and rich blue, and there's hardly a cloud strewn across it, yet the sun's heat's not overbearing either. There's a cool and gentle breeze that rushes past you as you stand on the hill. The air is refreshing and clean. All you can hear is the rustling of leaves and brush. Wow. Alice joins you at your side, straightening her back and putting her hands on her hips. She looks over the landscape before you both, lost in thought. Whoa. Of all the things to anticipate, I wasn't expecting this. It's beautiful. She shrugs her shoulders. It's alright. It doesn't tell me anything. She grimaces. I still have no clue where we are. Maybe we're on a different island? I don't know about that one. You don't see these kinds of landscapes on an island. Safe to say we're far from that crypt, though. She brings a hand to her chin. That statue transport us all the way to one of the continents? Never heard of statues that could do that, let alone magic with that capability. So what now? 
Why are you always asking me that? I just assume you have a plan or something. Of course I have a plan, moron. She frowns at you. My plan is to get back to Ren. But I can't exactly do that if I don't know where we ended up. She looks off towards the hills. The only option we have is to look around and try to find a village or something. And maybe we could get some answers on where we are and how we can get back. At the very least, we could orient ourselves on this map. This could quite literally be anywhere. Yeah, fair enough. As you start to walk off, Alice would follow you. Although you would hear her faintly muttering to herself as you begin to explore. It's been a while since I've been off that ship. I haven't walked around like this in a long time. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess you just pick a direction and start walking. Guys, are you seeing this? This is insane! Also, thank you for the two hydrates. I think I already did one of these, but I'll do the other one just in case. Ron Tay, thank you for following. And Queen, thank you for the gifted sub. I really appreciate it. You're so sweet. Ah. This place is huge. I say north? Uh, I don't have a compass. I don't know which way that is. Hey, the sun? I don't remember what direction you're supposed to go from the sun. I want to roll down this hill. <laughs> I don't want to break any bones. <sighs> go up. We seem to be pretty up right now. I guess there is that incline, but... If only Bucket was with us. Yeah. Oh my god, are those mountains over there? Oh jeez. Wow. How are we supposed to orient ourselves? This just looks like... Grass. With more grass. And maybe a hint of a... Uh, um, how do I put this? Uh, more grass. This is crazy. Oh. Holy crap. This environment's huge! I just wanna like look around. This is so freaking cool. Okay, we keep on keeping on, I guess. Hello, oatmeal. Sun rising in the east and sets in the west. I have no idea which way it's rising right now. <laughs> Some kind of incline. Gorgeous valley. Place is breathtaking. Take some grass with you as a mentor for the one time you got teleported across continents. They'll have time for that, I guess, yeah. Collect some grass. Oh, what's that? Oh. Alice, what is this? Look down the hill towards the land below. Your eyes fall upon a group of animals gathered between a couple of trees. Are those boars? A couple of smaller ones would seem to sit restlessly in the shade of the leaves, while others would wander around out in the open. They would grunt and squeal, puffing air out of their nostrils and shuffling their hooves around in the dirt. Ellison takes a breath next to you, looking down at the sight. Yeesh. That's not ideal. What do you mean? Dealing with wild animals usually isn't too big a deal, Alice shrugs. But boars? Uh, they're a little more stubborn, especially if they're in a bad mood. She points down towards one of the largest boars, which would be stomping around in the grass between the trees. Take that big guy, for instance. Looks like he's pretty agitated. 
See how he's stomping his hooves like rounds like that? Uh-huh. That tells me that instead of avoiding us, they'll probably get aggressive if we tried to pass by. She explains. Hmm. Ella shrugs, starting to walk forward. <sighs> Whatever. Guess it can't be helped. Just stay there and don't wander off while I scare them away. Nah, don't even worry about this. I got this. She pauses in her tracks, looking back at you. What? She looks you up and down slowly, putting a hand over her mouth to stifle a laugh. <laughs> You're not being serious, right, Rex? I mean, you couldn't take Aisha in a fight. And those things down there, those are aggressive, wild animals. <laughs> I mean, sure, they look pretty tough, but, uh, they're no fog monsters. <laughs> she laughs out loud this time at your statement. Someone's getting pretty confident. You in one fight against a couple of cowardly pirates, and you think you can take on the world, huh? You know, why don't you just sit back and let me handle this one, Alice? At that, Alice would let on an audible scoff of disbelief. What? What? You? She stumbles over her words, blinking at you rapidly. Eventually, however, she would walk back over to you, throwing her hands up in the air. Wow! Okay then, hotshot! Go ahead! Give it your best shot! She motions down to the boars dramatically. They're all yours. <laughs> Check this out. What? <sighs> okay. Let's give this a shot. Boars, huh? Come on then. What? <laughs> Woohoo! Oh wait, this is awesome. No, oh, I love magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man, this is crazy. I feel like I'm getting the hang of this. Come on. Huh? What is that? Oh, whatever. Just the big guy left. You almost got him too. Come on. <laughs> yeah! That was easy! Woohoo! That actually rocked! You cackle proudly as you admire your handiwork, the large boar retreating quickly past the tree line. You wipe your brow, looking down at the gauntlet on your arm as the metal gleams in the sunlight. The fiery orange focus glimmers within its slot, the fires and embers slowly fading away as the fight comes to an end. Several of the other smaller creatures rush away from the conflict. Ha! That's right! You better run! Ellis would descend down the hill behind you, walking up to stand at your side and give you a strong pat on the back. You jolt forward with the strength behind her supportive touch, but you manage to stand your ground. Ellis chuckles. <laughs> All right, Rex. I'll bite. I wasn't too bad for a rookie. This fire punch is awesome! Right. Just don't forget who made you that spell, moron. She chuckles, crossing her arms. So obviously it's gonna be awesome. Alice would pause, however, looking down at the ground. She walks forward, picking up a large boar's t ivory tusk from the ground. She tosses it up and down in her hand with a raised eyebrow. What's that for? Nothing in particular. You just never know when you might need something like this. At the very least, we could sell it for some coins or something. She states, motioning towards the ground. Might as well take what we can get now, before we move on. Oh. Alright then. Even up on that hill, we couldn't see any signs of civilization. With all the trees around, you can barely make out what's ahead. Let's try and find a higher vantage point, she says before looking around. Eventually, her gaze stops on a nearby hill that stands a bit taller than the previous one you were both walking across. She points towards it. There. Let's try and get up there and see if there's anything around, alright? Alright, let's head on up then. Man, that was awesome. Huh? Oh. Is that, like, a... What is this? Boar hide. Huh. Cool. Oh, sweet! We got loot! <laughs> it's so awesome! Oh, 
Okay. Is that the hill? I think that was the hill. Alright. Let's go this way. Oh, man. We should stash this in our bag, though. So now we have a boar hide and we have our uh, lucky coin. Cool. I'm feeling pretty good. It's a whole lot of wilderness. Let's just keep our weapons out in case we encounter any more boars. <laughs> the little pop-ups make this feel like an MMO. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? Feels like an RPG. Which, you know what? I'm kind of here for. I'm good at RPGs. Maybe this is my element. Oh, that's such an exciting thought! Hmm. Let's see. Um. Maybe up here? I think this is the highest point around this area. This is at least shaded. This is nice. It's a little cool spot. We got closer to the mountains. I guess that's the highest point that can- Oh! Oh! Lois, look! I see something! You managed to reach the top of the hill, pausing into the shade of the rather large tree and looking out at the world below you. The iridescent fields stretch out as far as the eye can see. And in the distance, you see tall rocks and cliffs jutting out from the earth. Your eyes fall on an inconsistent portion of land, where the grass has seemingly been beaten and cleared into a path of sorts. Alice pants a bit behind you, wiping her brow as you point towards the road. That looks promising. A nice find, Rex, she nods. Where there's a road, there's bound to be a village. And where there's a village, there are people. She sighs. <sighs> Sooner we can figure out where we are, the sooner we can figure out what to do next. Looks like it goes left and right. Any idea which way we're supposed to go? She pauses, placing a hand over her eyes to shield them from stray rays of sunlight. She squints as she looks at the path, observing how it extends in either direction. Uh... Her jaw tightens. She grumbles to herself in frustration. <sighs> Always something... So, I don't know, man, she states simply. We'll just have to pick a direction and start walking, I guess. Why don't we get there first before we start worrying about that? It could be a sign or something we're not seeing from up here. Oh, good point. All right, then let's check it out. The leaves, look, there are leaves falling from the trees. X, how are you feeling about all of this? I'm feeling excited. This place is so freaking cool. Man, look, those fields go out forever. Huh. Alright, uh, down to the path. Look, wait, there's a flower. Look at it. I've never seen this much of nature before. Huh. Now here's the path. And there's the right, which goes out towards that. And this one seems to go towards the mountains. Hmm. You and Ellis make it to the road, stepping onto the rough and dusty material that divides the grassy plains from the path. Ellis places her hands on her hips, looking left and right carefully. Hmm. I don't see any signs, Ellis. Me neither, she agrees. All right, let's think. There aren't any immediate indicators of life in either direction. On the right, we have more of the plains, and on the left, the road leads to those mountains. She points up towards the tall, rocky mountains in the distance. Ugh, this is so annoying. That was smooth, sir, bangs out of her eyes. Okay, uh, maybe we could try... Before she can finish, however, you both begin to hear some strange noises behind you. 
Noises like sticks or branches cracking and snapping under your feet. You spin around to investigate the sudden sounds, your eyes scanning the area as you look for its source. You watch in shock as a mound of vines and sticks will begin to rise from the dirt, bark and brush emerging from the earth and twisting into knots, forming a rather unsettling conglomeration of leaves and flora. Oh, what the heck is that? You both step back as the creature begins to trudge forward, glowing eyes blinking to life within the hollow knots of the brush before gazing directly at you. Alice would lean forward, spreading her feet and preparing for a fight. Beats me, but it definitely doesn't look friendly. It's really just been one thing after another. She pauses, looking over at you. You got this, right? I mean, with that super awesome spell of yours. What? The creature lumbers at both of you, almost lunging with surprising speed. You and Alice quickly jump away from its attack as it creaks and groans like an old tree in strong winds. Oh my god! Okay, yeah, I can do this! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what is this? Oh, what is yeah! that? <laughs> what is that? Okay. Don't need shooting things. Alright, cool. Okay, awesome. Amazing. Okay. Done. And, uh, don't. Oh, these thorns are so thick! Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Ow! Jeez! That hurts! Oh gosh! Oh, okay, 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 okay! What is this thing? It's like a bundle of bush! What the heck is going on? Ah! What was that? Catch on fire! This thing is fireproof! Ow! Okay, oh, oh okay! Ow, 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 I don't feel good, I don't feel good, I really don't feel good. This thing is just not getting here. Okay, um, I really can't hack through these thorns. Oh! Okay, I get it. I can dodge that. I have to just use that same nimble- Whoa! Whoa! This slams on the ground. Okay, um, 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 think, think, like a video game. Guys, what do we do? I can't cut through this thing. And these brambles aren't catching on fire. Advice. How do we hit it? Okay, that was uh, scary. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm alright. I'm alright. So far, so good. Catch the projectiles? Sure, we could try that. Except it throws one at us. Let's, uh, let's give that a good shot. Come on! Uh, okay, no, no, there's no catching. That's just straight up toxic spores. That is straight up just toxic spores. All right. Okay. Oh, this is getting really difficult. Ah! I need to dodge better. Okay. Ah! Ow. Okay. All right. Oh. Hmm. Well, actually, it keeps knocking me into the air occasionally, right? Maybe. And I'm, I'm, this, is a, this is a big hypothetical. Maybe I can knock it too, right? Like, it's just throwing me up in the air and I'm getting massive air time. What if I can flip this thing over? What if it's like a turtle? Oh, well, let's try this. Ah! <laughs> yes! Yes! Whoa, it can't, it got bigger! It got bigger! It has a squishy underbelly! This does work! Nice! Oh, and it's bigger! Okay, you know what? That's cool! Oh, okay. We're just gonna keep dodging. What? Nice! We got moves! Yo, I feel nimble! What? Yeah, we're not gonna be able to hurt that thing like that. Oh, we're gonna have to dodge that better next time. So far, so good. You get the moves. Woohoo! We dodged that. Watch out, Ellis. Yes, dodged. It's so clean. What? This is awesome. Oh, it's getting ready to do it again. Let's do it. Come on. Yes. Come on! 
All righty. So what, that makes twice now? This thing's gotta be getting hurt, yeah? Right, 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 right. What is this? I've never seen a plant monster in my life. Whoa. Okay. It's gonna stay, oh, no, okay, all right. You gotta float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Okay. Woohoo, got that. Oh, I've got such clean movement. I've got such good movement right now. This rocks! This is my element! I was made for this! What? Yes! Oh, it's doing it again! Come on, this time for all the marbles! What? Ah! Ah! Come on! This one's gotta do it, right? I'm getting worn out. Come on! Come on! Come on! What the heck? It's regrowing its vines! It's like it's out regenerating all of my damage! Come on. No, there's no way! It's like the nuts, like it wasn't even hurt! I don't have a, enough damage, it keeps out healing! Oh, this sucks! Crap, 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 crap. Ugh. Dang it! Uh. Any bright ideas, moron? This thing isn't dying! I don't get it! What about your super awesome spell, huh? It's not really the time to be making fun of me! It's always the right time. Especially when you're being an idiot! We're about to get eaten by a massive bush with eyes, Ellis! Hey. You okay? <sighs> the unfamiliar young man looks back at you with an indifferent expression. He sheaths his greatsword, resting his arms at his side. His vibrant sapphire hair would be pulled back in a long braid that goes down his back, although his bangs would still fall in front of his eyes. He blinks a couple of times at the two of you as you stare at him. <clears throat> he clears his throat politely and repeats his statement. You okay? Y yeah man, thanks for that. Mm-hmm. It just gives you a single nod, acknowledging your gratitude quietly. Ellis extinguishes the flames around her fists, shaking out her hands and straightening up at your side, looking the new arrival up and down carefully. She doesn't say anything. So, uh, what the heck was that thing? Oh, it's called a kabloom. Immediately, Ellis puts a hand over her mouth, stifling a laugh. The young man just looks over at her outburst, her expression his expression remaining neutral and unchanging. Ellis chuckles. <laughs> Wait. K Kabloom? That's what it's called? She asks, trying to hold back her giggles. <laughs> You're not serious, are you? That's what it's called. He answers simply. That's an... interesting name. The man nods once again. It digs holes in the ground and waits for unsuspecting travelers to pass by. He explains. When they do, it springs up from its hole and attacks. He looks towards an opening in the earth behind you both in the grass next to the road. Must have settled by this road, he mumbles. It was dangerous. You normally don't come this close to the city. Wait, 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 city? He looks back up at you and Alice. What are you two doing out here? It's not safe. Uh... Alice pauses, trying to figure out the right words to say. We're not really from around here, I think. He stares at you blankly. His face hardly emotes, although you could tell your statement confused him. He tilts his head slightly, trying to understand what you meant by that. What? What the moron is trying to say, Alice immediately steps in, is that we've been through a lot of stuff recently. Stuff that you probably wouldn't believe. Okay. D d d do you want us to elaborate, or...? The man makes no indications of answering your questions. 
So, pretty much, Ella starts to explain, stepping forward. We found this cool statue thing and a weird diamond that fit into the statue. And when we put it in, we ended up getting teleported or something to a random temple in the middle of nowhere. And now we're just looking for a city so we can figure out where the heck we are and where we're going, what we're trying to do. Where we're trying to go. She motions back towards the hole in the ground. And we didn't exactly know there were creatures like that just lurking around here. But you seem to handle it well enough. You think you can help us out or not? The man looks between the two of you casually, listening to Ellis' statement. You notice his eyebrows raise slightly as she continues her explanation. You definitely lost him somewhere along the way. Mm hmm. Without another word, he turns on his heels and begins to walk away entirely, going down the road towards the mountains. W w w where are you going? Oh. He pauses, looking over his shoulder at you both. Follow me. With that, he would continue to walk off down the road. You and Alice watch him go before looking at one another, absolutely befuddled. I guess... he wanted us to follow him? Alice shrugs. I guess? Why didn't he just say that? Alice massages her temples before starting to jog after him. Well, come on, idiot! Let's go after him! Right! Don't, don't, wait up! Huh. <sighs> City, huh? City? What would a city look like in this world? I'm curious, I guess. The mountains. So there's like a perfectly cut path in the mountains? It looks like it. Like a valley of some kind. Huh. Dang. Maybe I'm not as strong as I thought. If I'm thinking of this like an RPG, maybe I'm level one and that creature was more like a like a level 10 boss i gotta level up a bit whoa big mountains i've never seen the mountains before chat not really oh whoa Oh, whoa! It's a bridge. Over a pond. In the mountains. Wait, this is wicked! Oh crap, sorry, I got distracted. Huh. Okay. Well, we're here now. What's up? You and Alice and the young man walk across the carved stone bridge. You look up towards the surrounding cliffs, water falling from the slopes into a lake below. A grand arch stands before you, and beneath this arch be two heavily armored guards. As you approach, they would stand at attention. They're focused solely on the blue-haired young man in front of you. Captain Lane! The guard addresses the man. You're back from your patrol sooner than usual. And who are those people behind you? The man motions back to the two of you. I found these two outside the city while I was on my patrol. The guard looks back at you and Alice in surprise before chuckling, looking back at the young man who he addressed as Elaine. Ha! <laughs> Classic Captain Lane fashion, I see. Always helping people outside of the city's walls. Mm-hmm. Lane just nods. Wait, hang on, Captain? You hear Alice being a grumble to herself. Ah, isn't that fantastic. Rex, you should know that I have a problem with authority. Yes, yeah, somehow that doesn't surprise me. You turn back towards the guards in lane, just as the guards would salute their superior. Good work, Captain! We expected nothing less of you, sir. And I su suppose it's safe to assume that you managed to save them while you're out in the wilderness? Uh, that's amazing of you, sir! Lane would just blink at the guard before looking away. Nodding his head once. Mm hmm. Um. Lane tries to continue, crossing his arms. I think they need to go to the Latona Registry. Because they said a lot of things out there that I didn't understand. Are you sure it's safe to let them into the city? They were stuck out there in the wilderness. 
We have to let them in. All right, Captain. We trust you. Let them in as you command. The guards salute once more. Although I must say, it's incredible that they managed to survive out there. There's plenty of crazy things going on outside of these walls, and these two don't seem very well equipped. What? You think just because they don't have any obvious weapons that we're weak? Alice scoffs. <laughs> they don't even know us. I mean, we did kind of need the help in the end, Alice. Alice rolls her eyes, frowning. Lane turns back to the both of you, glancing each of you in the eyes before looking past you towards the plains beyond the bridge. Uh, welcome to the city, I guess. These guards will handle the rest. I'm going to finish my patrol. And with that, Lane would carefully walk around you both, continuing back into the wilderness. See you around? Maybe? How charming. Ella states harshly. The guards interject, turning their full attention to the two of you. Don't mind Captain Lane. He's all work. <laughs> the guard steps forward, bowing to you both. As he said, welcome to the city. You must have gone on quite the difficult journey to get here, given the unrest outside the city walls. Yeah, you could say that. You seem a bit frazzled and confused, the guard observes. Do you have any questions? I may be able to answer some of them. The guard straightens up, standing tall before you, waiting your questions. Oh boy, finally! I can just ask questions and people will answer them? That's crazy! Thank you for the hydrate, Epic Man, so cool. Mmm, yummy yummy. So, uh... Who, who, who was that guy? The, the Captain Lane? And Captain Lane is one of the captains of the Aegean Vanguard here in Arrowin, Guard explains. That sounds... pretty cool, actually. Ella scoffs a bit next to you, but you ignore her. The Guard continues. <laughs> He's been doing patrols around the city's walls to make sure no one is leaving unaware and getting caught out in the wilderness by monsters. Usually, he monitors the path just outside, so you're lucky he managed to stumble, you managed to stumble upon his patrol while you were out there. Well, that is pretty lucky. You have no idea, Ellis mutters under her breath. I was about to say that we should go right instead of left back at that road. Did you have any other questions, travelers? Where is this exactly? Oh, you must be pretty lost if you don't even know where you are right now, huh? And the guard asks in surprise. Well, this is the city of Erwin, the capital of acceptance and cooperation in the name of Unity. Ellis's eyes widened slightly at that answer. Erwin... She repeats. Oh. So we're in Mythos right now. Wait, what? That's correct, ma'am. The guard confirms Alice's statement. Alice glances in your direction, shaking her head. Don't worry about it for now. Do you have any other questions, travelers? Uh, yeah, wh what, what's going on out there? I'm not sure what you mean by that. The guard hesitates. What he means to ask is what's going on back there in the wild. Ellis jabs her thumb behind both of you, motioning back towards the road out of the city. When we showed up, we couldn't walk around for five minutes without having to fight something. Oh, haven't you heard? Ever since the Awakening, the entire region's become rather unsafe. The Awakening? It's ridiculously dangerous out there, especially for travelers like you, the guard states. I'm honestly surprised you were able to travel all the way here on your own. That's incredibly unsafe, you know. If I were a captain, I would have reprimanded you for doing something so reckless. That other guy didn't reprimand us, Ellis states, frowning. Captain Lane's just got a charitable heart, I suppose. But really, you shouldn't be leaving the city anymore. Not w especially not without protection. Ellis leans over, whispering to you. <laughs> What's he know? It's not like we had much of a choice. She states plainly, more interested in what this awakening is. You know what I mean, Rex? Yeah, I'm curious too. You agree before looking back up at the guard? Do you have any other questions, travelers? Um, no, I think that's about it. Great, the guard says. In that case, I have a question for you in return. His voice becomes a bit sterner, even slightly suspicious. Where did you people come from to get caught outside the city like that, exactly? You both hesitate, glancing at one another, 
unsure of how to respond. It's a long story. Alice uh, states plainly. Yeah, I mean, I fell from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> As you say this, you notice the guard go completely silent, their heads slowly turning in your direction. Ellis also snaps her gaze towards you. You what? The guard asks. N huh? Seriously? Ellis hisses at you. Why would you admit to that, you idiot? Hang on. The guard steps forward towards you. You are one of the people that fell from the sky. Y y you've heard of me? The guards glance at one another cautiously before turning back to you. <clears throat> You need to go to Latona Registry. That's where all the new arrivals are sent, but if you really are who you say you are, then you'll want to inform them as soon as possible. They'll know how to handle it from there. And where is the registry, exactly? The guards look towards the stone path that continues past the Grand Arch into the mountains. You'll want to follow this path straight and through the front gates. You'll need to pass the first two blocks of homes and businesses until you make it to a large tree at a four-way intersection. From there, you'll be making a right into a plaza. The registry will be on the right of the plaza entrance. Do you understand? Sure. You and Ellis start to walk through the arch to follow the path. However, before you move too far past the guards, one of them would grab you by the arm, lowering his head to look through his helmet at you. His tone is serious and stern. And hey, no funny business. You got that? I wasn't planning on any. Good. The guard releases your arm and nods to you and Alice. Go on ahead. Welcome to Arrowwood. And with that, they turn their backs to you, returning to their post before the arch to guard the main city entrance. Mm. Alice rolls her eyes, nodding at you to follow her down the path. Come on. This way. Right. Huh. I should turn down my render distance real quick. Just a bit. Just, 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 just a wee bit. 32 might be a little bit too nuts. Okay, good. <laughs> others? That's not the first time I've heard about there being others. This place is really cool. There are cliffs and lampposts. Huh. Oh, second gate. And whoa, 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 yo, yo, oh, what? It's an actual proper city. Huh. You step into the city proper. Looking up at the rows and rows of wooden buildings and homes, lined up as far as his eyes can see. The lanterns hang on wires above the streets, and the walkways are busy with people and carts. You can faintly make out the sounds of horses clomping around on the stone pathing, and the shouts of business owners in the distance. The air is cool, and you can feel the salt here of the sea drift on the wind. Alice stretches her arms across her chest as she walks forward, observing the streets carefully as if she were reminiscing. Oh, man. This place. <laughs> you know it? Yeah, she says, glancing back toward you. I've been through here before, actually. Once. It's been a while, though. Oh, so you've been here? She nods. Come on, Rex. You didn't think I was always a pirate, did you? You know, I had other things going on before I joined Ren's crew. Oh, what kind of other things? Things that are none of your business, she says, immediately shutting down your questioning. Come on, just follow me. I know where the registry office is from here. Okay, Andy, lead the way. Oh, she pauses in her tracks just as she was about to continue forward. Before we go any further, though, a word of advice. This place is alright, just try not to mess with the wrong people, okay? The city's safe for the most part, but I'm not about to risk us getting booted out because someone decides to be a bigger idiot than normal. Especially if the region's as dangerous as they say it is. She looks around suspiciously. I don't want to be left unaware. And I'm not exactly looking forward to a rematch with another kabloom or whatever it was called. I hear you. I'll stay out of trouble. Good, she nods. However, you pause, 
putting your hands behind your back innocently and looking away. Although, you start, between the two of us, you're the one more likely to get into trouble. You're the pirate here, not me. She quickly snaps back at you, putting a finger to her lips. Not so loud with the pirate talk, alright? Besides, I know how to behave, moron. I've been around a lot longer in this world than you have, remember? Kidding, I was kidding. <laughs> totally joking. Huh. Lead the way. Wow. It's a fountain! And there are people. Lots of people. Tons of people. Huh. Dang. This city's actually quite big. Huh. And these streets, they're like so full. Whoa. Tree! Huh. There's walls? It's like a square. Huh. It's so pretty. Where's the uh, registry? Look at all the people. This is it. Wow. Huh. This is crazy. Um, uh, I mean, hello. Are you, uh, you who I need to talk to? And if this is the registry, um, I guess you chat up the secretary. Hello. Greeting. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Okay, you and Alice both walk toward, toward the front desk with the Latona industry. An older woman sits behind the desk, writing on a couple of sheets of paper with a quill. As you approach, she sets her quill aside, adjusts the papers in front of her to straighten them and align them with the rest of the desk, and looks up at you with a kind smile. Hello, welcome. How can I help you today? Are you new arrivals to Erwin? Yeah, you could say that. Wonderful. Then how may I help you? Are you registering for Erwin citizenship? Or perhaps you're just visiting with us today. She leans forward, scooting her chair in to give you her full attention. Alice nudges you with her elbow, motioning for you to go ahead and talk to the woman about your situation. After bright. Uh... Well, about that, you hesitate, not sure of how to present the information to her. The guards at the front told me to come here and talk to you because... Uh, I told them I fell from the sky. Immediately, the woman's jovial and warm expression falters. Her skin goes pale and her eyes widen. The smile remains, although somewhat more strained than before. Uh, miss, are you okay? You fell from the- <clears throat> She starts to loudly interject before quickly cutting herself off, putting a ginger hand over her mouth. She adjusts her composure, smoothing out her skirt before looking back up at you. <clears throat> you fell from the sky? Uh, yup. Basically, Moron here fell from the sky and we ended up getting stranded, Alice explains to the woman. We found a weird diamond and put it in an even weirder statue that transported us to some ancient temple. We climbed out of that, walked around the plains for a bit, ended up finding a road and now we're here. I see, the woman states. She audibly gulps, trying to hold back her shock and alarm at the details of your story. Are you okay? Yes, yes, I'm perfectly fine. I, um... She hesitates, unsure of how to continue. L let me go and get my supervisor, all right? I'm not certain I'm, in fact, qualified to handle such matters. She quickly stands up from her desk, 
walking up from behind the front and bowing to both of you. If you'll just excuse me. With that, she'd begin to leave, walking towards the stairs leading up to the next floor of the office building. But, uh, hang on! Ella starts to interject. What are we supposed to do in the meantime while you're gone? Just wait here, please, the woman says, once more giving you a forced smile. Wait! Ellis complains. I have a problem with waiting, lady! Ugh. Yeah, you seem to have a problem with a lot of things, Alice. I do apologize for the inconvenience. I'll be just a moment, I promise. In the meantime, you're more than welcome to use our waiting area and any of the reading materials we have down here to entertain yourselves. Woman states before disappearing up the stairs. Alice watches her go in irritation before groaning, turning back towards the seats in the corner of the room. <sighs> Fine. Whatever. It's better not take all day. Seats. Chair. Ah. Room. Wait. Hum, 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 hum. <laughs> You sit for quite some time, your eyes wandering around the office as you take in as many of the details as possible. The registry is silent, with the only noise being the commotion of daily life outside the front door. You can't help but kick your legs back and forth, looking at the potted plants next to the couch. You experimentally touch the fabric of the couch, pushing it up and down to test its comfort. Once you've made your conclusion, you place your hands in your lap, fiddling with your thumbs aimlessly. Ellis, who's sitting nearby, leans over to grab a newspaper off the table in front of you both, flipping it open and beginning to read it casually. Her eyes are half-closed in disinterest as she scans over the headlines. You can't seem to hear the receptionist or her conversation upstairs with the supervisor. You and Ellis are all alone in the waiting area. A minute passes by. Well, it feels more like 10 or 20 as you sit idly. Ellis, I'm bored. She sighs, looking up at you from past the newspaper. She puts on a sarcastic tone and a grin. Just wait, Rex. You can be patient, right? I mean, it seems like you have a problem with everything. She mocks her words from earlier, looking back at the newspaper. <sighs> Touché. And I'm still really bored. Oh my god! She drops the newspaper into her lap in disbelief, looking directly at you, her previous sarcastic facade vanishing. Is it my job to entertain you now? I mean, it would be helpful. You can't just entertain yourself. There's an entire office here, Rex. You'd think you'd be able to find something to do that doesn't include bothering me. Yeah, easy for you to say. I don't exactly- I literally don't know anything about this place. You lean forward towards Alice. I don't know what's allowed, or what's not allowed. I don't know what they want with me, or what the deal with the whole falling from the sky thing is. I don't know what's going on in the city, the list goes on! You exclaim. That's what I'm trying to figure out too, idiot! She snaps back at you. Why do you think I'm reading a newspaper right now? I'm trying to see what's going on around here too. Oh? Well, what's the newspaper have to say? You scoop forward in your seat, resting your elbows on your knees in interest. Alice looks you up and down before sighing, picking the newspaper back up and flipping through its pages. <sighs> Let's see... Ah, here's one. <clears throat> she begins to read the paper out loud. Monsters sighted outside the city. The king remains silent? Are you a king? What did you expect a kingdom to have? Looks like he doesn't know how to respond to the monsters either. <laughs> she chuckles a bit, skimming through the article. Well, what else is there? Uh, she flips to a different page. Regional unrest leads to closure of Lunar Isle. Lunar Isle? What's that? Some important landmark, I guess, Ellis states. Well, why did it close? I don't know, something about the High Priestess needing time to ruminate, whatever that means. Priestess? Yes, priest. Are you still on the religion thing? Ellis pauses. And are you going to ask a question every time I say something? I swear, this is the fourth time in a row. Well, what else am I supposed to say? This is all new to me. And me too. She grits her teeth before groaning. Oh, we're clearly not getting anything useful from these newer articles. Ellis shakes her head. Let's try to look for something a little older. 
and we can get to the bottom of when this all started and work things out from there. She flips to the back of the newspaper. An article on the second to last page catches her eye. Oh, here's one that looks like a couple weeks old. Reports of people falling from the... She cuts herself off. Oh. Wait, what, 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 what's it say? Your interest is piqued as you quickly jump over to sit next to her, looking over her shoulder at the article. Uh, country of mythos is torn asunder after rumors of several individuals falling from the sky have spread across all three kingdoms. First, City of Erwin believed itself to be the only one suffering from the effects of the Awakening. And now with these new fallen people being sighted all around Rem, one can only wonder what's happening now. All around Rem. So this is happening all over the world. Looks like it, er Ellis nods. And now we're here. She tosses the paper back on the table. You think we'll run into any other people who fell from the sky? I doubt it. <laughs> Alice scoffs. You have any idea how unlikely that is? What are the chances that all of them also happen to find a one-of-a-kind priceless diamond in some ancient statue that could transport them all the way over here? She leans back, putting her hands behind her head. It's just not going to happen twice, Rex. Yeah, I guess you're right. The odds are pretty astronomical. Exactly. That kind of thing doesn't just happen on accident. Ellis looks down at the paper with a frown. And that was the last interesting headline in that paper, too. Now I'm bored. So... Now what? Now we... Ellis cuts herself off, however, as the front door of the office opens. You both look up curiously as the young woman walks into the office, pausing in the center of the room. The woman would stand straight, her hands clasped in front of her politely. Her entire would seem formal and proper, a professional jacket hanging from her shoulders, held in place by a glittering and expensive-looking clasp. Under that clasp would be a pristine fabric bow, the cloth's pattern imitating a night sky full of stars and constellations. Two horns stand proudly on her head, as they do yours, though the shape would be a bit more slanted vertically. Despite her appearance, her eyes and expression are gentle enough as she turns her attention to you and Alice, scanning each of you as though she were taking in every last one of your details. Uh... Hello? Alice starts. I have just one question, the woman states in a calm voice. Which of you fell from the sky? Uh... What? Whoa. Greetings, the young woman nods her head. Which one of you fell from the sky? She stands patiently and offers you a small smile. Is this the supervisor that the receptionist was calling for? Oh, uh, that would be me. Her eyes flick over to you curiously. Hmm. She brings her hand to her chin, walking closer to you with her head tilted. You blink in confusion as the woman begins to circle around you, examining you with narrow eyes. Hmm. Interesting. Um. So, you're not, you're just a dread, she asks, pausing in front of you and giving you one last look up and down. Nothing more? I, I uh. Yeah, Ellis steps in. He's just a dread. And not a bright one at that. Hey! You interject, looking back at Alice in a fence. The young woman considers both of you, looking down in deep contemplation. Hmm. Curious. She looks back up after a brief moment, clearing her throat. Apologies. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ambrosia Douglas, record keeper of the Arrowwin Star Seekers. She bows her head to both of you politely. Oh. Well, I am Rex of... Rex. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Rex, Ambrosia assures sweetly. Her eyes flick over to Alice. And you are... Alice, she states curtly, putting a hand on her hip. Alice. That name seems familiar. Immediately, you notice Alice begin to sweat. 
Nope, no, no, it doesn't. She states, clearing her throat. I'm just a friend of his. That, that's it. Never been here before in the slightest. She begins to slowly sidestep towards the registry's exit. You know, this seems personal. So how about I just wait outside for you two, okay? You can get this, Rex. Uh, yeah, you got this. Alice gives you a weak thumbs up before unceremoniously gunning it for the front door, throwing it open and swiftly walking out of the building altogether. Ambrosia narrows her eyes as Alice leaves. You can't say you've ever seen Alice sweat like that. That was... different. Ambrosia simply shakes her head. <laughs> Perhaps my arrival was... unsettling. I can't blame either of you for being hesitant or suspicious of me, especially given the lack of context. I hope you'll forgive me. I promise that I don't mean any ill will towards you or your friend, however. Oh, wait, no, I, I didn't get that vibe at all, I just... You try to consider your words carefully, unsure of how to explain yourself to Ambrosia. I'm just... confused? I don't really know anything... at all... You look back up at her, your brow physically furrowed. Well, that's understandable, she states, tilting her head. May I ask, how long have you felt this way? Ever since I fell from the sky, I guess. I haven't been able to understand anything that was going on since then, you explain. It's all just so new to me. I see. Do you happen to remember anything from before you fell? Yeah, I... Hmm. You pause. Of course you still remember what happened before you fell from the sky, but why are you supposed to explain that to Ambrosia? Is it even safe to tell her the truth? You can be honest with me, Rex, she persuades. I can only help you if you let me. I want to figure this out just as much as you seem to as well. She looks at you expectantly, waiting for your answer. Do we trust her? Chat? I think I agree with the trusters. Here we go. Actually, you start... How are you going to explain this to her? Uh, I don't know if you're going to believe me. Try me, she immediately says, placing her hands behind her back and lowering her head. She looks into your face very carefully, her expression patiently confident. I, uh... I actually don't come from here, you blurt out, rubbing the back of your neck. I, I come from a different world. I, I went to sleep one night, and suddenly I woke up in this world, falling out of the sky. That was about a week ago, I think. You grimace. I have no idea how it happened. I'm just some guy where I come from. I don't even know why I'm here. Hmm. Ambrosia is silent for some time as she considers your answer. Is that so? She murmurs. I, I know it sounds kind of ridiculous. I believe you, she states, looking up at you with a deadpan expression on her face. What, y y you do? Really? You blink in surprise. Indeed. Rem is no stranger to magic, you see. And while I haven't heard of anything like this happening before, everything that's been happening lately has been rather... unusual. The entire kingdom is grappling with concepts we can't make sense of. Therefore, I'm willing to accept this as the truth, even if I can't be entirely certain that you're being forthcoming with me. I'll take your word for it. Oh. Well, that's really cool of you, actually. She giggles a bit at your response, putting a hand over her mouth, <laughs> before returning to her questions. So, this other world of yours... Have you been able to return to it since you fell? No, I haven't. My apologies for your loss, then. It's fine. It'll be okay. She clears her throat. <clears throat> In that case, could I just confirm some of the details to make sure I understand? You came from another world suddenly and abruptly, without any prior indication. You have no idea how or why this happened, let alone that you would fall from the sky. 
She intakes a breath. Do you know anything about the others who fell? No. I just heard that there were others, but I don't know who or where they are. Then it's fair to say that they're likely experiencing the same confusion as you, Rex, Ambrosia states, turning to the left and taking a couple of, well, taking a couple of paces forward. Especially if they all come from a different world than our own. She looks back at you. This will take extensive study. With your permission, Rex, I would like to hear what all you're willing to share of your time in this world, from when you fell to the present. I mean, I wouldn't mind sharing more with you if you answer some of my questions, too. Of course, she nods to you. I'd be more than happy to help you gain a better understanding of this place. Okay, fine then. I'll tell you everything that happened. For the next several minutes, you convey to Ambrosia in great detail your experiences in Rem since you fell. You tell her about your run-in with Ren's pirate crew, and your adventures aboard their ship. You tell her about the attack of the Kraken, which threatened to tear the ship in two before you struck it in the eye with a sword. You tell her about how a fight with another pirate crew caused you and Ellis to get thrown overboard, where you washed up on an unnamed island. And you tell her about the dark, misty mausoleum, which held many treasures, but even more dangerous in the form of dark, smoky wolves and other monsters. As you tell Ambrosia your tale, her expression would be entirely unreadable as she nods, seemingly noting everything you say in great detail. However, you failed to tell her about waking up after seemingly dying to the Kraken on Ren's ship. Alice warns you against sharing that information openly. And while you think you can trust this woman, you can't be too sure yet. And that's how we ended up here. I see. You certainly had quite the journey to get to Erwin, she comments. I apologize for all the trouble you've had to endure. She clears her throat. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing, Rex, and trusting me with this information. Now then, a deal's a deal. Do you have any questions for me? Oh boy, where do I start? Um, I have so many questions. I don't know what to ask first. Uh, I mean, you said you were a star seeker. What is that? Star seeker is my title as a member of the King's Council, Ambrosia explains. You could call me a government official, if it helps you understand my role better. Oh, I see, you say. I must be pretty high priority to be talking with you then, huh? She giggles a bit at your statement. <laughs> Very much so, she confirms, giving you a small smile. So, then what is this place? I mean, I know it's called Arrow, and, but I don't exactly know anything outside of that. You're correct. This is the city of Arrow. It's actually the capital of the kingdom of Arrow. It's one of the three kingdoms that preside over Mythos and controls a portion of its land. We're quite open to almost anyone in Rem. Of all the places to find yourself in, and perhaps I'm biased to say such things, but I believe you're very fortunate to have found yourself here. She motions towards the exit, referring to the, entire of the entirety of the city outside. You won't find a safer or more welcoming place beyond these walls. Of course, I can't speak for the rest of the region, given present circumstances. Hmm. What exactly is the Awakening? Ah, so you've already heard about that. Yeah. I know it has something to do with all the monsters outside the city or something. You nod. Rex, you must understand. You didn't just fall out of the sky. At the exact same time, or so we estimate, our kingdom underwent a... transformation of sorts. Well, what happened? A number of ancient ruins started to appear out of seemingly thin air, and new magic began to bound forth across the land, a type of magic that no one seems to understand. This magic has caused agitation in the creature population beyond the city's walls, and all of this has left our kingdom scrambling to adapt. Based on what you've told me about your own encounters, I can only assume that those creatures attacking you were a byproduct of this magical emergence. I see. Is everything okay? My fellow Star Seekers and I are handling things as best as we can. We're not quite in a state of calamity, but we are in a state of, how you say, struggle. I hope you can bear with us while we figure this out. 
She brings a hand to her chin. In fact, the information you provided about this mysterious temple you found yourself in? This aligns with what we know of these ruins created by the Awakening. I can only assume this temple appeared alongside the rest of them. We'll have to investigate this location further in the future. So, you're in dread, right? Astute, she smiles. I see you understand what that means. I think so. Well, as far as I understand it, dreads are people with demonic traits, right? You ask her. She pauses, taken aback for a moment before awkwardly laughing. laughing. <laughs> I um, would have refrained from referring to them as that, but <laughs> yes, you are correct for the most part. Although... Your confusion on what it means to be a dread, I can assume that means you weren't a dread in your original world? No, I wasn't. Not sure why I changed. I'm not certain either. It's quite peculiar, she ponders. However, being a dread myself, I can assure you, there are no fundamental or biological difference between you and, under ra and other races. Besides your blood being more charged towards magic, that is. Wait, really? That's awesome! She chuckles at your excitement. However, her statement about dreads does give you pause. Uh, actually, speaking of magic. Do you know anything about the magic in that mausoleum I told you about? You ask. And I can't say I have any answers regarding this mausoleum or the magic present within. It does not sound familiar, and therefore it is nothing local to the Arrowin region. She responds. I'm afraid the same goes for the Temple of Unity you spoke of. The magic is... Unheard of to me. Dang. Uh, that's all right. Thought I'd just ask in case. Well, that being said, Arrow Ambrosia starts, I'm certain you'll be able to find the answers you seek elsewhere in Arrowin. There are plenty of individuals in the city with more expertise in this subject than myself. Perhaps they will be able to help you. Are there any other questions, Rex? Hmm. I think that's it. Well, I hope I answered your questions to your satisfaction, she smiles. If you have no other answers, if you have no others, is there anything you wish to tell me before we part ways? You consider her question carefully. During this entire conversation, Ambrosia has taken your story quite seriously and listened to you while you spoke. Additionally, she did answer all your questions as promised. I feel rather comfortable speaking with her. Maybe. Actually, there's one thing I left out, but I'll just say it. You inhale and exhale calmly. When I encountered that Kraken on the pirate ship, I didn't just defeat it. I actually got crushed by the creature as it was escaping. But then, out of the blue, I suddenly woke back up in my cabin, just unscathed. This would give Ambrosia pause, causing her eyes to slightly widen. Truly? She asked quietly. Yeah. I know I've hit you with a lot of crazy stuff. Actually, that's one of the most believable things you've told me so far. Wait, really? You stare at her in disbelief. Mm-hmm. She nods, if you would believe it. In fact, Erwin is probably, possibly the only place I would even begin to believe that statement. I'll just say this, Rex. You are not alone in that experience. Although it is beyond rare and quite interesting. She looks at the ground, muttering to herself. After a moment, she shakes her head and looks back at you. I'll have to discuss this with my fellow star seekers. Huh. Then what should I do in the meantime? In the meantime, you and your friends should just focus on situating yourselves in the city. Well, I cannot offer you permanent residence at this time. I will see about getting your visitation approved, and we will speak more in the future. She lowers her head, looking you in the eyes. This will not be the last time we see each other, Rex. I promise you that. Oh, good to hear it. Of course, she continues. If you want my advice, there's an inn on the other side of the plaza. You can stay there for... One moment. She pauses, digging around in her pocket. Her eyes shine as she takes out several polished copper coins from her pocket, placing them into a small pouch from, behind, from the registry front desk. She holds the pouch out to you with a smile. Here, 
This should afford you three nights at that inn. At, at that inn. If you need any more, I'm certain you'll be able to find help or opportunities to earn money elsewhere in the city. Unfortunately, I won't be able to pay for your permanent stay. With all that's happening, it's simply not a commodity I can afford. You're doing plenty. Thanks. Really. You're welcome. She smiles. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd best be off. I must call a meeting at once. Farewell, Rex. We'll see one another again soon. Bye, Ambrosia. With that, Ambrosia turns to walk out of the registry, closing the door quietly behind her as she exits, leaving you alone in the office. Huh. That was a lot of information. Uh, hey chat, what's up? What do you guys make of all that? The way she talked, it seemed like I was the first one she met. I mean, why would there be any others here, anyway? One of a kind diamond and all that. Oh, wherever they are, I hope they're doing okay, I guess. Especially if they are just as lost as me. Heroin. Sounds like a cool city, though. And I can't believe I already got to talk to a, a government official. That's crazy. So their government must work like they have a king, and then they have a council below that king? Huh. Hey, that's a good call, Cat Path and Mogi. Maybe we can make friends with them. <laughs> Where's Ellis? Oh, she might be outside. We can go check on her. I just kind of want to gather my thoughts for a second. Alright, let's go look for Ellis then. I'm feeling pretty good. That Ambrosia lady. She was very helpful. I feel a lot more comfortable now. No, hey Ellis. You walk out of the office, still considering Ambrosia's words as you leave. She really wasn't surprised by your immortality? In fact, she believed everything you said. Not even you would believe everything you said, and yet she took it in stride, and really listened to what you were saying. Oi! Rem to Rex! Alice's voice immediately interrupts your thoughts as she starts to wave her hand in front of your eyes. Nah, I'm good, I'm good. So, she crosses her arms and leans forward. How'd your talk go? You in trouble? Not at all, actually. She was really chill. What does she want to know? Ellis raises an eyebrow. Just about what I've been through since I've got here. Where I came from, what I could remember. That kind of stuff. And you didn't tell her anything, right? When you don't immediately answer, Ellis's eyes widen. Right? You see, you've got to be the biggest idiot I've ever met. You think after all we've been through, you'd be a little more focused on self-preservation. But no! I, hey, I didn't see anything wrong with telling her. I can't believe this. She massages the bridge of her nose, shaking her head. What did I tell you about looking out for yourself and your own best interests? If you don't keep your cards close to your chest, it'll come back to bite you in the- Okay, okay. Message received. Look, you continue. She already knows, so it's kind of too late to fix that now. Besides, she seemed genuine. She was actually really nice. Check this out. You pull out the pouch of coins Ambrosia gave you. She gave us enough for three nights at an inn. Ellis stares at the coin suspiciously. Three nights, huh? She asks, a bit unimpressed. What's wrong with that? You squint quizzically. Nothing, she states. I'm just thinking, that's all. Three nights is a start, but it's not as long as you think. She, Ellis explains as she kicks a loose rock. Though, if the outside of the city is really that dangerous, I'm not too fond of the idea of surviving on her own out there. She sighs. We'll have to figure something out to stay in here for the time being. Which goes beyond three days in an inn, but I guess it's a start. Hmm. She said there was an inn just across the square from here. I'm guessing there? 
You point across the way, past the fountain, towards a large building opposite the registry. Alice looks around the plaza before looking back at you. I don't see anything else across the square, she snickers a bit. Come on, moron. Let's go check it out and see what we're working with. You haven't been there? Just because I've been in the city doesn't mean I've been everywhere in here, she quips, rolling her eyes. Well, from what you've seen, then, is the city cool? She shrugs her shoulders. It's definitely big, she says. You've only seen a small piece of heroin. There's plenty more city than these walls. Too much to explore in one day, <laughs> that's for sure. Then hopefully you won't have too much trouble finding work. Don't worry about work. I've got some ideas. Let's just go to the inn for now. All right, then. Huh. I want to poke around a little bit. Well, there are some of the walls. I wonder where this archway leads. Looks like to more city. Oh my god. Tss. Whoa. Now that. That's gnarly. Huh. Well, let's go check out the tavern, I guess. Let's see. Hey, there's a little stall outside. It's so cool. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, check this out! They got a stage! I'm not getting on that! <laughs> no, no, no way! No, 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 not getting on that. What's this? Is that's upstairs? Is that a plate? This is so cool! In a tavern! We talked to the. Are you the innkeep? Are you who we talk to? Is this the place? As you and Alice walk toward the front counter, you can't help but notice how lively the inn and tavern are. There are possibly dozens of people gathered inside, sitting around the tables and laughing with one another. Alice, on the other hand, would ignore the celebrations, approaching the woman behind the bar as she speaks with a couple of other patrons. She smiles, noticing you both as you walk over to her. Hello there. Welcome to Wayfinder's Rest. My name is Juno, the owner of this establishment. Do you need a place to rest? Or perhaps you're just here for a drink in a friendly atmosphere? Uh, first one. I got, uh, these? I think this is enough for three nights. You step forward, taking out the pouch of coins and handing it to the woman. Juno accepts the pouch, opening it and taking out the silver coins that Ambrosia gave you. She counts up the coins, mouthing the numbers to herself so she calculates your total. <laughs> you certainly came prepared. <laughs> She giggles a bit. Yes, this is the perfect amount for three nights. In fact, it's the exact amount. I'm impressed. Oh, great. So, do we get a, like a, like a room number or a... Juno shakes her head. No, oh, no. Nothing like that. I can show you to your room myself. Don't worry. That room's gonna have two beds, right? Alice asks quickly. Because if it doesn't, that one's sleeping on the ground. She points at you. D hey! I, I'm sure that's not necessary, miss. Juno laughs awkwardly. I can lead you to an available room with two beds, not to worry. Please, follow me. She walks out from behind the counter, brushing off her apron and procuring a ring of iron keys from a pocket in her skirt. She begins to walk up the stairs left of the inn's entrance. All right, then. Whoa. This is so freaking cool! What the rooms? This the room? Oh, yo! Why, it's like living in a hotel! Wait, this is awesome! This is so cool. I get like a desk. <gasps> I can store things! Boar hide. Yeah! Woohoo! We stored something! And a bed! Wow, is this like a king? Wait, this is awesome! This rocks! 
You and Alice enter the room in awe, looking around the space. The room would be rather large and expansive, with several windows looking out at the city sites. The room would be divided in two, both halves being perfect mirrors of one another. Either side has a bed, two chairs, and plenty of desk space with a wooden chair neatly pushed under the table. You slowly start to gravitate towards the right side of the room while Alice moves to the left. Whoa! I hope the room is to your liking, Juno states from behind you and Alice. Just as you requested. This room houses two people in queen-sized beds, rats, and will last you three nights with your payment in silver. Yeah, <laughs> this is more like it, Alice nods, flopping down backwards on the bed, giving a satisfied sigh as she pats the mattress. Man, it feels like too long since I've been in a bed. I'm glad I was able to satisfy you both then, Juno smiles. This is great. Thanks a lot. It's my pleasure, Juno states. I'm more than happy to house weary travelers like the two of you. How do you know we're travelers, huh? Nellis raises an eyebrow, sitting up. I've been running this in for quite some time, dear. Juno clasps her hands in front of her. I know a traveler when I see one. You both carry so much exhaustion under your eyes. You must have been through quite a lot before riding in, arriving in Erwin. Can't say I'm surprised with the awakening and other events. She sighs. Plenty of travelers just like you have arrived, looking for a place to rest from the monsters outside. And I'm certain you won't be the last either. Therefore, I'm more than happy to help however I can to make your stay as comfortable and relaxing as possible, she states, her expression gentle and kind. Huh, Alice grunts, sitting up on the bed and leaning forward on her elbows. And that reminds me, before I forget, Gina would hold up a finger, looking down at her large ring of keys and beginning to fiddle with it. She works an iron key off the ring and holds it out to you. Here, this is going to be your key into the room. Make sure you don't lose it now, all right? Oh, right. Uh, thanks. Not a problem. If you need anything else, be that extra pillows, comforters, food, or drink, just let me know. I'll be right downstairs if you need me, Juno says. Enjoy, you two. And with that, Juno would leave, closing the door quietly and politely behind her. You glance at Alice, the key in your hand. She shrugs at you. You heard her, idiot. Hold on to that key and don't lose it. Yeah, I got it. You put the key into your pocket. Your fingers brush against Julia's coin for a moment. You pause, looking over your, into your pocket to look over its contents. They don't have much on you, so there's not much for you to store here for now. Alice sighs, standing up from the bed, and stretches a bit by pulling her arm across her chest. So... What do we do now? We? Alice raises her eyebrows. Well, we are doing nothing. I'm going down to the docks. Wait, what? If we're going to survive in the city long term, we're going to need some kind of income. Therefore, I'm going to get in contact with some... people. And you're not going to get involved. Are they people from your backstory? What, what, what is that even? She pauses, shaking her head. <sighs> yeah, sure, whatever. But they're people who have nothing to do with you, so you're not coming. Got that? What, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? I don't know, that's not my problem. She shrugs. It's a big city. I'm sure you'll figure something out. I stay out of trouble and do whatever while I'm gone. With that, Alice would walk towards the door. And I seriously can't go with you? Like I said, you're not involved with the people I'm going to go meet, so there's no point. We'll just meet up later after I'm done, she states. Behave while I'm gone, she states, opening the door and walking out of the room. As she goes, you hear her mutter under her breath. I want to go from being a pirate to a babysitter again. She closes the door behind her loudly, leaving you alone in the room. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. I'll just chill in the room then. And this is fine. It's a room, so why wouldn't I just chill in it? Why is my perspective not changing? Alright, you know what, whatever. Wow. It's a pretty cool place though. New spawn point set. Cool. Window. This is pretty cool. Oh the training grounds! Oh that's awesome! Oh that's so cool! Ah, uh, hello! Hi! Why am I waving at people from a window like a moron? Alright. 
What about here? The seats outside. Not this one. Oh, it's a view of the square! Oh, this looks so cool! Oh, look at all the sights! Hey, oh, pfft. Glass tastes weird. Ugh. Wow. I kind of want to look around, but... I don't know where to go. What if I get lost? <laughs> uh... I'm a, oh, big city, right? She said you can't cover it all in a day. What if I get stuck on the other side and then it gets dark? And then I get lost and I can't make my way back. And I have to sleep on the street. Huh. What do we do? Any ideas? I'm kind of stumped. I want to sit here the whole time. Screw Alice. What should we do? What could we do? Mom, look at the strange dread. Look at the window. <laughs> Hang around and don't wander far. I guess, but then I'm going to get distracted. Take a nap. Jump on the bed. I like that idea. Hi! Woohoo! It's bouncy. Look at that. I'm bouncing. Yeah! Woohoo! Yay! Uh. Well, that was fun for all of 30 seconds. Hmm. Maybe we could talk to, like, one of the locals? They might be able to give us advice on what to do next, you know? <gasps> the innkeeper! Yo, we, we can go talk to the innkeep! I'm curious what these rooms look like. It won't be weird to just burst into a random room, right? Let's hope it's empty. Anyone home? Oh, the door's open together. Genius. It's a cool looking room. Dang. Did Ambrosia pay for like the biggest one? This is awesome. It's so nice of her. Go walk in on something? No, it won't. Wow. That is awesome. Look, there's seating areas. With seats! That you, you you sit in them! I just sat in a seat! I am sitting! Okay, let's go ask let's go ask around. Hmm. <gasps> there's a there's a clock! It's midday. Cool. Hey, uh, hello. Hi. Um, can I ask a question? You head back down the stairs, approaching the front counter. Gina would stand behind the counter, greeting a couple of new arrivals to the bar before turning your, her attention to you. Hello again. I trust you're enjoying the room. Oh, you, yeah, the room is great. I just... There's something bothering you? She raises an eyebrow. Anything I can help with? She looks at you expectantly. She would continue to clean behind the counter, wiping down the flat top and adjusting several of the glasses on the shelves behind her. Still, her eyes never leave you. I mean, it's no big deal. I'm just, uh... You have the back of your neck. Never been here before? So I don't really know what I'm doing in this place. You know anything, like, fun I could do around the city? Her eyebrows raise slightly and she chuckles. <laughs> of course! What kind of innkeeper would I be if I didn't know the local hotspots? She walks over to you, leaning over the counter to give you her full attention. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Or will anything do? Oh, I mean, really anything at this point. Uh, whatever's nearby, maybe? Well, if you're looking for something nearby, I would recommend visiting the Farah Marketplace, she states. It's one of the districts adjacent to this one, and it's home to dozens of shops and businesses. If you want to go shopping or even just browse through the wares, it's a great place to pass the time. You might even make some new friends. You never know an heroin. <laughs> Far from marketplace, huh? Sounds promising. Uh, where is it? Gino motions to the door. When you exit the inn, you'll want to turn right and head out of the plaza that way. She explains. Once you reach the mountain slope, you'll want to head down closer to the harbor. The marketplace is going to be above the docks and below Latona Gate, which is where we are right now. Alright? Okay. So I just want to head down. Got it. Exactly. That area of the city is usually quite lively, too, so 
If all else fails, stick to the streets and follow the sounds of people, she says. And I'm certain if you need any further help, someone would be happy to point you in the right direction. I know the big city can be a bit confusing, so don't worry if you get confused. It's completely natural. She straightens up. Good luck and have fun. Thanks. Huh. Far on marketplace. Okay. Um, chat. I immediately forgot the instructions. Where do I go? Which which, which way do I turn? Was it left or right? Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what did you just tell me to do? I blinked. Chat. Um, guys. Hey. Uh, <laughs> did anyone catch that? No? Um. Uh. I guess right. I look around, I guess. Huh. There they are. They're training. I don't want to get in the way of that, though. Huh. Walls. Maybe we look for an opening in the walls? Follow the sounds of people. You're right. Um, let's follow the wall. That sounds like a great idea. Oh, the city's huge. That tree is beautiful. Whoa, whoa, hey, sorry. Whoa. My, my bad, I didn't mean to bump into you. Whoa! Is that it down there? This city's huge, okay? I'm on, like, the other side. What the heck? Uh, excuse me. Is it down there? <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm walking around this like a little like what is this? It's like a little it's like a little it's like a little it's like a little thing. It's like a little walkway. That's so cool. Okay, this city is amazing. Huh. Maybe we can go this way. Rex, do not fall. I will not fall. Let's keep looking around. <gasps> Staples! No horses right now. Dang, I wanted to pet a horse. That's okay. That's really cool. There's a gateway there. No, 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 we can't set anything on fire. Look, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna put the fire spell in timeout too, right next to our room key. All right, there's physically no way we could set anything on fire. That's this way. Yo, look at the mountains. Look, look. Wow! This is so awesome! Check it this out! It's just so peaceful and calm. I'm heading down a mountain right now. Yo, that's awesome. This rocks. Look at all the houses, too. And the trees. Another gateway. Check this out. Yo. Is that another way up and down? Looks like it. Those stairs go up. Yeah, that's another way up. Okay. Hello. Whoa! It's another square! So this is the marketplace. It's a little pond! It's a pond! It has lily pads! Another one of these little thingies! Look at it! I don't want to go up. I probably shouldn't go up again. It got down. Wait, this is amazing! I want to take my time and look around. It looks like there's an area that's higher elevation right there. Hello! Hi! Hello! What is this? Whoa! It's a store! 
There's such cool stuff in here. Those overalls? That's a dress! Wait, that's so pretty! What is this place? This rocks so much. This is genuinely so cool. I feel like a kid in a toy store again. This is amazing. I've never seen anything like this before. How do I get up there? I want to get up there. I want to check out that place. It looks like another open area. What's up here? Yo, is there a park? Well, what's that tree? Oh my gosh. Wait, this is so pretty. Look, they're purple leaves. The leaves are purple. Is that a swing? Yo, <laughs> yeah. I'm on a swing. I am sitting on a swing. Oh, this is baller. And there are park benches. And little fires. Picnic blankets. Look, I'm sitting. I'm in a bench. And there are lanterns hanging from the trees. Where does this go? Ooh. Oh, look at wow, look at that. Look at that view right there. Look at that. It's so cool looking. What's in here? Whoa. Yo, is this a bookstore? Look at all the books. Look at all the shelves. Huh. Wait, this rocks. This actually rocks so hard. This is gorgeous. Absolutely breathtaking. And there's stuff over here, too. Oh, the more books, I see. Look at this. So many shelves. So pretty. This is more than books. A countertop, tables and chairs, barrels, shelves. A bed? This is a furniture store. This is for furniture. It's a kitchen! Oh my gosh. This is so cool. How big is this place? I wish I had a map of the city to look down at. I have no scope of how big this place is. I already feel like I'm getting lost. That park is so pretty. Oh, look at the little garden. Keep looking around. Why don't you get that like little plaza over here? There's another swing. Oh, it's a cute little park spot. Oh, and they're just enjoying their time. Like this place is amazing. It's another blanket. That book. I guess someone took a walk. Man, it's like a maze. Don't get lost, Dreadboy. I'll try. I'm sure if I walk long enough, I might find my way back around, though. 
Oh, where did I go? What's this way? What's this way? Oh! Like a cute little spot. I want to go up these stairs. Another, another, another swing. That's a big building. Whoa. So Rex, where is the inn? Uh, somewhere up there. <laughs> Whoa, how, how many squares are there? Oh my God, those are dolls and they are the most adorable things I've ever seen. Oh my God. Whoa, it's like a blacksmith's or something. Let's see, what is this overlooking? A beach! There's a beach! Yo, it's the coast! I think those are the docks over there that Alice must have gone to. It's a beach. Oh, this is a dead end. It's a beach. Look at it. Go play in the sand. I don't know how to get down safely. Oh my gosh. Look, there's more city over here. Look at that. I go this way. Ooh. Such a pretty street. God, these streets are amazing. Hello. You're a guard. I'll walk the other way. Hmm. This is really cool to just walk around. I feel like every time I turn a corner, I find a brand new street with something else on it. Yo, that's another forge. That's really cool. Nice. What's this? Oh, is this the way down to the beach? Oh, it is. Oh, look, there's a little hut. This place is enormous. Huh. What's this way? Huh. Hmm. I oh, I'm walking. <laughs> As you turn the corner, your vision's consumed by another person, mere inches from your face. You both collide into one another, and you hear items thud and crash into the ground. You fall backwards, losing your footing and landing on the ground, your head mildly throbbing from the collision. You hear the other person cry in a high-pitched voice as they too would fall backwards. Sounds like a girl's voice. That's okay! Oh, oh, sorry about that. I didn't see you rounding the corner. You pull yourself to your feet, using one of the buildings nearby to brace yourself. You walk forward, immediately noticing a number of paper bags scattered on the ground, contents spilling from them. You blink for a moment before you realize what must have happened. Quickly, you kneel down to help collect the items back into the bags. Here, sorry, let me help you with that. Ah, thanks, I guess. The voice sounds from nearby. You hear the flapping of wings as you pull the bags up, resting them against the wall upright to ensure nothing more spills out. But next time, just watch where you're going, guy. Some people are trying to fly here. Right, sorry. Wait, wait, hang on. 
Did you hear her right? Fly? You slowly turn towards the voice in confusion, your eyes narrowing as you try to decipher what she's saying. But the sight that stands before you is even more surprising than her vocabulary. A winged being, the body of a bird, but the face of a person, would waddle next to the backs, looking up at you with a furrowed brow. The creature has glasses resting on its nose, and a red scarf around its... neck? You can only assume that's what it is. The creature has sharp talons for feet, much like those of an owl or a bird of prey. And instead of arms, it would have a set of white and gray feathered wings. What are you looking at, huh, guy? Ah, I'm talking bird! Bird! The creature exclaims, her face going red as she spreads her wings. She uses her appendages to motion to herself, her fingers moving to imitate human fingers in a rather animated fashion. Who are you calling a bird? Uh, uh, uh. First you bump into me, and then you call me a bird. You got some nerve. However, the being would stop, blinking at you in confusion. Her eyes would gaze into yours, widening, glittering in amazement. Whoa! They suddenly exclaim. What? She flies up to you, staring at your eyes in particular. She beams in awe. A silver eye dread! No way! She announces before beginning to circle around you, observing you in your entirety. Wait, what? what? What's wrong with silver eyes? Your question's ignored as the creature would notice the gauntlet on your arm. And you got a gauntlet too? Whoa! That's so cool! She stretches out her talons, latching onto your gauntlet arm, forcing you to hold your arm horizontally as to ensure she doesn't fall from her perch. The creature would brush her feathers against your focus, examining the mechanism in wonder. But, hey, don't mess with that! Oh, look at that too! Your attention leaves the gauntlet almost immediately as she waddles up your arm, her sharp talons digging into your skin. It doesn't hurt, but the feeling's certainly new and unfamiliar to you, causing a chill to run up your spine. The creature leans forward with her avian body to stare at the amulet around your neck. That's a powerful necklace you got there, too. <laughs> she looks up at you with wide eyes. You must be pretty strong and important to have all these artifacts on you, huh, guy? I, I, I mean, I, I don't know about that. And the creature detaches itself from your arm, fluttering down to the ground to stand in front of you. She motions to herself with a wing, grinning. Sorry about earlier. I didn't realize I was talking to someone so interesting. My name's Harper. Nice to meet you, guy. Oh, uh, hi, Harper. Name's Rex. Cool name. Rex, huh? I'll remember that. She rubs her chin with a feather. Who would have thought? I'd run into a cool guy while I was out. A guy with a gauntlet. And silver eyes. Today's a good day. <laughs> you still find yourself staring at the creature in dismay. Curiously, as she speaks, you only now notice that her mouth isn't moving. It's like her voice is entirely audible to your ears. But she's making no physical indication of speaking. Uh, would you be offended if I asked what you were? She looks back at you, still smiling, although her expression would falter and twitch slightly at the question. Only slightly, she states, but since you caught my interest, I'll let it slide. She flies up to flutter at your eye level, flapping her wings and bending her talons at you mischievously. I'm a harpy, see? A harpy? Wait, wait, wait. So, you're a harpy. Named Harper? Immediately, her grin vanishes, and she stares at you with a completely deadpan expression. What's wrong with that, huh? Nothing! No, nothing at all! <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. She sticks her tongue out at you, landing back on the ground and waddling over to her bags. Sorry, I just... never met a harpy before. Oh, yeah? She glances back up at you. <laughs> and I bet you never met one that talks either, huh, guy? She giggles at her statement, putting a feather over her mouth. Yeah, I don't even know how you're talking right now. I mean, you're not moving your mouth at all. I can just hear you. How is that possible? You ask Harper. Magic. Duh, she grins. I'm talking through telepathy, see? I don't gotta move my mouth to talk. I'm speaking directly to your brain. Crazy, right? I... Yeah, I'm not even surprised by this world anymore. The harpy pauses. This world? What do you mean by that? Uh, 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 uh nothing. I'm just new around here, so I meant like, uh, this place. Oh, I getcha. Harper nods her head, clearly falling for your deception. No wonder I haven't seen you around. She pauses. Hang on, that means you showed up during the awakening? How'd you get here with all the monsters outside? Or the magic spreading across the land? It's a long story. But I'm here now. 
<laughs> Looks like it, Tharapi grins. Guess it's good to have you then. You're definitely one of the more interesting people around the city. So, were all these bags yours? How are you even carrying them all? What, just because I'm small you think I ain't strong guy? You sure ask a lot of weird questions, Harper states. Of course all the bags are mine. And yes, I can carry them all. She flies up to the bags, grabbing the straps with her talons. I was just out here doing some errands for a friend when I ran into you. I was just about done. I just gotta... However, she pauses, blinking down at one of the bags. She lands on the ground, using her talons to push the bag onto its side so she can look, on, look inside. Hang on. Where's that potion gone? I swear I had a potion in here. Oh. Uh... You look at the ground behind Harper, pointing down. She glances behind her, and her eyes widen as her gaze falls on a potion bottle, shattered on the ground. The contents of the bottle soaks into the ground, and the glass is in pieces before them. She gasps. No! The potion! She glares back at you. Oh, this is all because I ran into you! You better pay for that guy! But what, what? I don't even have any money, though! You don't! No harpy exclaims. You got all these cool artifacts, you don't have a couple copper on you? It's been... A rough 24 hours. Ugh. Harper groans. Great. Now I gotta go back to Hugo and buy another one. She sighs, flying up to the bags and grabbing them all with her talons again. Sorry about that. It's fine, I guess. The harpy states, glancing back at you. You're lucky you're pretty cool, you know. I'd love to talk more, but I got some errands to run and a potion to rebuy. The harpy would begin to fly off. Guess I'll see you around then, Rex. Uh, yeah, yeah, see you around. Huh. huh. Harpy. So we've met... Oh, what all were they? We've met... Humans. Animants. Dreads. Harpy. I was, that, the harpy was more like a creature than like a... Like a person? I... I Harper. Okay. Huh. She seemed pretty alright. Time for the part where she gri griped at me because they broke her potion, but I guess that's honestly fair. I'd be pretty grouchy too, I guess. Okay. What do we do now? I guess we keep walking around forever. What if I bump into someone else and then they break another potion? You know what? Screw this. Screw Alice. We saw the docks. I'm gonna go to the docks. I'm gonna walk straight to those docks. And uh, there's nothing she can do about it. Nope. Not a thing. Huh. That's a building. Let's see. Where are the docks? Where is this? Um. This looks like an edge. We get to. We could probably look down or something. Huh. Large building. I wonder what's in there. Ah, here we are. Look at the sh Whoa, there's ships! In stalls! With stuff! Is that a meat stand? Yo! Yo! This city's so big. <laughs> it's actually enormous. It is literally gigantic. And I don't even think that's an understatement. Whoa! 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 Look at this! Now that... That's pretty. That is really pretty. Oh my... What's this way? Ah! This is the way. Yes. Here we go. Big and open. 
So this must be the docks. Okay. Cool. Neat. Look at these stalls. Jeez. Crystal coffee. Huh. It's really cool. Like a snack stand. I don't know what that is. It looks like a candy stand. Drinks. Oh, meat. Oh, my mouth is watering, but I can't steal. I'm not a thief. Fish. I guess that makes sense right at docks. Berries? Are these berries? Yo, how do I go down there? Stairs. Target locked. We must go to the stairs. What I step on? What made that sound? I think that was ice. I think I stepped on ice. Steal a fish from the ocean. Smart! We need a fishing rod, though. We gave Jalen's rod back. I hope they're doing okay. What is this? It's like statues. It's like masonry or something. They're like pots and stuff. This. So much different stuff. <gasps> there are more dolls! Look at that boardwalk. Look at that pier. I don't actually know how I'm gonna find Ellis. This is a maze. That's a crane. Bigger ships. Oh my gosh. A little book stand. Is that a warehouse? There's a cart here. Medicinal herb, herbal teas, huh? Uh, hello, excuse me. This place is huge. I'm getting like light. I'm getting dizzy just by from looking around. Ew! What is that slime? <laughs> the ships just get bigger. Apple stand. Think. Just red foods or something. This looks like strawberries. I have no idea what half these things are, actually. Lamps. Okay. Oh, it's like a gate. Metal. Just bits of scrap, I guess. Madam Matchmaker? Huh. So cool. Who is this? Oh. As you continue to pass by the stalls, you find yourself drawn in by a mysterious figure who sits on a blanket in the middle of the market stands. They would have a hood over their head. In a long black robe over most of their body. As you pass by, they catch sight of your gaze and quickly point a gloved hand at you. You there. Dread. <clears throat> Me? Come. Come. The figure says, wiggling their finger to coerce, coerce you closer. You hesitantly walk forward, standing before them. You wouldn't be able to make up their face past a mysterious mask. How are they wearing all those layers in sunny weather? You look like someone who's lost. Confused, perhaps? I... am, actually. I could sense it. Your gaze is that of a night sky, glittering with stars. And yet your body does not carry the same drive or conviction. You're conflicted. 
at odds. You have so many questions, and yet none of them seem to fill in the gaps with answers. You got all of that just by looking at me? What if I told you I had the answers you sought? They state, by simply looking into your palm, I may read your future, the winding path of your fate, nay, your destiny. They lean forward. Well, are you interested? Uh, pff, heck yeah! Sign me up! Yeah, no, a familiar voice chimes in. You glance in the voice's direction to find Ellis walking over to you, grabbing you by the wrist quickly to pull you away. Not interested. Thanks anyways. What? This fortune teller starts to argue, but Ellis is already dragging you far away from them. Huh? Well, well, Ellis? Wh where'd you come from? Gods, leave it to you to get dragged into some kind of scam. Ellis mutters. Once you're far enough distance away from the fortune teller, she lets go of you. It's a scam? What are you talking about? Listen to me, Rex. She says very seriously, placing her hands on your shoulders. If anyone claims that they can read your fate or your fortune, they're spewing crap, okay? Destiny and fate aren't real. She sighs, hanging her head. <sighs> I tell you to stay out of trouble, and yet here you are. Well, I was actually coming to the docks to find you. I told you not to get involved for a reason, moron. She lets go of your shoulders, crossing her arms. I mean, yeah, you did, but... And I chose not to listen and involve myself anyways. She blinks at you in absolute shock before allowing her head to fall into her hands, face palming. Oh my god. Did you meet that person you were trying to find? I don't know if your timings are outstanding or horrible, she says, looking up at you past her fingers. I was actually just about to go meet them at a bar to chat. She glances around the area before turning back to you. All right, you know what? I don't have the time to chastise you or walk you all the way back to the inn, so we're going to set some ground rules. Okay, is that really necessary? Yes, she states immediately. Rule number one, you're not going to say a word. You're going to let me do all the talking while we're in there. Got it? Fine. Rule number two, you're not going to follow my lead. You're not going to do any attention to yourself. You're not going to do everything. And you're going to do everything that I say. She looks you up and down for a moment. I guess, uh, just do your best not to stand out. Maybe keep the gauntlet under the table and don't make direct eye contact. Okay, that seems redundant, but okay. She hesitates, opening her mouth to say more. However, she wouldn't say a word. Instead, just groaning. Follow me, then. Let's just get this over with. Lead the way. Ugh! <laughs> here huh oh yeah this place doesn't look shady at all ah oh, whatever um uh <clears throat> hello the woman behind the counter crosses her arms as you approach looking down her nose at you with a smirk welcome to the seaside inn need something you seem intense. Oh, what do you have for sale? The woman puts her hands on her hips. Hungry, huh? I can whip you up something, sure. But it's gonna cost you. And I don't do refunds. Dang, this actually... I wish I had money. That's all I've got. Don't let the door hit you on the way out! The woman calls after you as you turn to leave. Huh. Actually, can I ask about you? Uh, hello. Who are you? What do you want, runt? The woman rolls her eyes at you. Uh. Who are you? Cassandra's the name. Running these docks is the game. You blink. What? Can't innkeep as a side hustle? Docks manager doesn't exactly pay the bills, you know. So, uh... Where are you from? I come from a magical place called Nunya. <laughs> what are we, girlfriends? Stay out of my business, Rando, and I'll stay out of yours. Okay. Duly noted. So why in keeping? 
Well, I own the building, so may as well make use of it. The woman explains. Managing the docks requires me to sit around all day anyway. Might as well make some extra cash while I'm doing it. Oh, but if you do see someone messing with my cargo... She slams one fist into her open palm with a cruel grin. Let me know, okay? You know what? I think that's all I've got. Good. I was starting to wonder if you are going to talk my ear off all day. The woman crosses her arms again. So do you need something or what? You know what? I, 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 I think I'm good. Well, then don't let the door hit you on the way out. What a pleasant person. What a pleasant inn. What a, um, you know what? Okay, chat, we gotta make our way over nonchalantly. <clears throat> Smooth. What's good? You slowly seat yourself next to Ellis, who would already be leaning forward in the chair to speak with the man across from you. You glance in his direction curiously. So this guy has a connection with Ellis? The man leans back in his chair, his arms crossed. He has burnt orange hair with faded blonde tips which hang loosely over his pale green eyes. He has a scar over the bridge of his nose and a couple of other small cuts and calluses on his hands. He has a black scarf around his neck and one booted leg kicked over the other. Look who finally decided to join us, Alice mutters to you. Mutters at you, giving you man an awkward chuckle. She leans over, however, whispering to you, What do you say about drawing attention to yourself? Let's play it cool while I do the talking, alright? Yep, got it. <laughs> I didn't expect you of all people to get a plus one, the man states, motioning towards you with his head. Don't worry about him, Alice states, leaning forward. Let's just focus on what you can do to help me out here, huh? <laughs> Seems a little rude, don't you think, Alice? You run off with pirates for a few years, and now... Second you come crawling back, you're hitting me up for money. Come on, Kylan. Alice rests her elbows on the table. As I was here, you always had some kind of work to do, but not enough people. Isn't that right? The man, Kylan, remains silent. Don't tell me someone got busted in the act. Alice snickers a bit. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> yeah, we're good. He scoffs. <laughs> Right. I know how to hide my dirty work. Unlike you. Your dirty work? What kind of connections are you talking to, Alice? Just shush. She shoots a quick look in your direction, bringing a finger to her lips and motioning for you to be quiet. She turns back to Kylan. If you've got business, then I don't see the problem with letting a couple more pairs of hands in on the job. Listen, Alice. Sir, distribution's gone down with this whole awakening thing going on. But I can't just let any random schmuck in on this gig. I've got a lot of people to protect here. In the past, sure, I could have thrown you a bone. But you made your choice when you skipped town. You weren't exactly known for running with the best crowd. Yeah, hey man, it's not like your crowd's any better. And seriously, who the heck is this? Kylan immediately points in your direction. Don't worry about him, just pretend he's not even here. Nellis waves you off. Do you hear how loud he's talking? He's gonna blow this whole deal. He exclaims, leaning forward and putting a hand next to his mouth, whispering, Is he a snitch? I swear to the gods, Ellis, if you're trying to bust me, this moron? Come on, he's too stupid to be in the guard. But hey! Besides, why would I try to bust you when I'm actively asking for your help getting work, huh? The fact you have to ask is suspicious in itself, Kylan states. What happened to your crew? I would have thought you'd been swimming in gold by now. We... May or may not be long distance at the moment. Ellis responds with a snarky tone. Ellis, I don't think this is a good idea. We should go. <laughs> We're not going anywhere, so sit back down and be quiet. Ellis grits her teeth. As tension surrounds the table, the bartender, Cassandra, would casually approach, setting a mug down in front of each of you with a thin smile. I couldn't help but notice that you guys came in without ordering, so I thought I'd bring you a little something. She states. Kylan immediately leans forward, casting a couple of glances in Cassandra's direction. Right. Thanks. He responds. Hmm. <laughs> she gives Kylan a knowing smile. Try not to, uh, drink so loudly over here, hmm? 
We don't want any guards giving out citations in my tavern tonight, do we? No, we don't, Kylan agrees. Good, good. Well then, I'll leave you all to it. Cassandra would walk away quickly, returning to her spot behind the counter. Kylan watches her go, his eyes tracking her every move, before eventually he would sigh, immediately following her advice on lowering his voice. So that's it then. You really just here looking for a job. Look, Alice, there have to be better options. We need the money, Kylan, Alice states stubbornly, although she too would lower her voice as she picks up her drink. Besides, we're good for it. You know that better than anyone. He hesitates. You're the only person I know in Erwin who always needs some work done. You said it yourself. Times are tough right now. Monsters are ravaging the wilderness, and ruins are popping up out of nowhere. People are bound to need a little pick-me-up, and a quick one at that. Seriously, what kind of job are we talking about here? Callan considers her words before groaning, taking a sip of his drink. <sighs> so what exactly are you proposing? That you'll start working as my runner or something? Me? Alice <laughs> points to herself, waving him off and laughing. <laughs> no, I said I was good for it, but not that I was willing to soup that low. On the contrary, she places a firm ham on your shoulder. I've got the perfect pack mule right here. Wait, what? What? Kylan would seem equally as confused. You just said he was too stupid to be a guard, so what makes you think you can handle my line of work, huh? Alright, sure, he's not the sharpest tool in the shed. In fact, he's pretty far from that. He's an idiot. Ha ha ha! Laying it on a little thick there, don't you think, Ellis? But... Ellis grimaces. He's the hardest working idiot I know. I don't think I've ever met someone more determined than him. I'm not kidding when I say that this guy would rather work his butt off to make a single person happy instead of throwing in the towel. Kylan raises an eyebrow at this. If you give him a job, he'll do it. And he'll do it well. Nothing really stops him. He's found his way through every obstacle I've thrown at him. And trust me, I've thrown a lot of obstacles at him. Alice. Huh. Kylan leans forward. His work ethic is really all that. However, he pauses. Well, what about his morals? I mean... He's been pretty vocal this entire time. How do I know he won't open his big mouth and blab to the nearest guard? I'll keep him in line myself, Ellis says. He won't say a word, right, Rex? She turns to you with a horrifying smile on her face. Her brow would be furrowed and her eyes would gaze into your own darkly. Uh, okay, okay, I won't tell her. Just don't look at me like that. See? Ellis turns back to Kyle with a chuckle. <laughs> He'll be quiet. Hmm. <laughs> Kylan hops, hanging his head. <sighs> All right. Fine. You're lucky, punk, Kylan says, shooting a suspicious glare in your direction. I swear to the gods, if someone like the Admiral gets wind of this, what did I just say? No one will find out. We'll keep it between us. You'll get your manual labor, and we'll get a paycheck. I say it's a win-win, Ellis shrugs. Did I just get recruited into the criminal underworld? Before you get so confident, Alice, Kylan raises a finger up to stop her. I want to see what he can do firsthand. He leans back in his chair, crossing his arms. Listen up, Rex, he continues. I've got three people who are expecting some specific items from me today. Uh-huh. I've hidden their packages behind this building, he explains. When you exit, turn right twice and walk past the pile of scrap metal and scaffolding. Go around the building until you find a single crate. His voice lowers to practically a whisper. In the crate will be the packages. Each one's labeled with a number, and those numbers correlate with these addresses right here. He reaches into his vest pocket, taking out a folded sheet of paper, slowly passing it to you from across the table. Right. No biggie. <laughs> Deliver those three packages to specified addresses, and maybe I'll consider keeping you around. Kylan states simply, leaning back in his chair. Seems easy enough, right, Rex? Alice glances at you. Alice, did you seriously just get me a job with, like, a, a, a dealer or something? A dealer? She raises an eyebrow. 
You're dealing with, like, illegal stuff. She stares at you blankly with a complete deadpan expression. Rex, for once in your life, please stop being an idiot and just get the job done. She motions towards Kylan casually. While you're gone, we're going to keep chatting shop a bit more. Just come back here when you're finished, all right? <sighs> Fine. Whatever. I'm going to do it. Oh, boy. <sighs> Great. This is gonna be hell. Huh. <sighs> Kylan has tasked you with delivering three packages to various individuals across the city. You have no idea what's in these packages, but Alice won't be pleased unless you manage to pull this off without messing up. Better get moving. Okay. Turn right. Turn right past all the metal scaffolding. Okay. Nothing to see here. Do -do -do. Yeah, just, uh, just casually. Um... Okay. Oh, man. What have I gotten myself into? What did Alice get me into? Delivery one to Anonymous. Great, cool. Anonymous, yeah, that tracks. Anonymous is asked to meet in an alleyway within the far marketplace. Four homes south of a blacksmith shop. Delivery two to Anonymous. Anonymous is asked to meet at their home in Latona Gate. Their home can be found two houses west of the front gate. The door is the middle door within the compound. Anonymous three. Anonymous is asked to meet at their home in the Waterside Grove. Their home is two houses north of Waterside Grove's entrance from Latona Gate. Oh boy. Okay. So the packages are in here. <laughs> and they sure are. Oh boy. They sure are. Okay. Well, I've collected the three packages. And I have to deliver them. Okay. I guess we just move the stuff now. So the first one is in Farm Marketplace, right? So I guess we just head there. And then we go to the Latona Gate. I think that's where we entered. Alright, let's just make our way over. Just don't think about it, Rex. Just don't think too deeply into it. Alright, do the job. You get paid. You make Ellis happy, you get money. Money means food, and an inn, and possibly other things. It's no big deal, just don't get caught, you know? Just, you know, just, just, just don't be caught by, by any any guards, by, by anyone, really. Um, don't get arrested after showing up in a new city in the middle of nowhere. Do you guys hear it storming outside? There's like thunder, like right now. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's whatever, it's just, it's just whatever. It's just whatever, it's fine. We're fine, <laughs> we're okay. Right. Looks like we head up here. Remember the staircase. So now we can. Hey, yeah, just don't, do, 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 don't mind me. Ha 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 ha! Not doing anything suspicious whatsoever. No, not me. No, I am. I am the least suspicious person in the city. That's a guarantee. Oh boy, I'm doing nothing about <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to act casual. I spend my whole life being casual, and now that it's come to the time where I need to be casual, I don't know how to be casual. How do you be casual about these things? Hello! Hi there, guard! How are you doing this fine evening? Day! Is it day? Is it evening? I'm not sure. Are you doing great? I'm doing great. I'm just walking. Yep, goodbye. Have a great one. Um, uh, where are we going? Is it this way? Who knows? I don't want to look at the instructions. What if someone looks over my shoulders and reads my instructions? That would be bad. What if I take a peek? Boop. Uh, south of the plexus shop. I don't know where the plexus shop is. We gotta look for the plexus shop. Then we're in business. Oh boy. Oh gee, howdy. It's serious Rex time. 
I am hardened criminal. I've trained for years, preparing myself to do this task. I am no longer Rex, I am... Rox. Rox grew up on the mean streets, and having nothing on his back but his clothes. Rox is fully prepared for anything that this job takes. Like, um... Grand Theft Auto. No, that's not gonna be in this world. Who would commit Grand Theft Auto? How would you commit Grand Theft Auto? You know what? Maybe I should just hope for the best. As you continue to walk down the street back towards the marketplace, you hear the familiar flapping of wings getting closer to you. Instinctively, you stop in your tracks and turn toward the noise, looking to your left down one of the connecting roads. You notice Harper, flying down the street with a couple more bags than before in her talons. You can't help but go a bit pale as you stand there, carrying your own packages and Kylan's slip of paper with instructions. Ah! Who look who it is again! Harper notices you and grins, flying over and fo flying forward to meet you. Ha! Yeah! It's me again. You know, guy, when I told you I'd see you around, I didn't mean this soon. Are you following me or something? She laughs. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> wow, look at that. Looks like someone got some bags of their own, huh? Harper flutters down to look at the packages in your hands. You quickly pull them away from the harpy, trying your best to keep them sealed. Oh, come on. What'd you get? More cool artifacts, maybe? Ooh, work magic spells? Let me see. Actually, they're not for me. Eh? She tilts her head curiously at you. You consider your words. How are you going to explain this one? You can't just tell her that you may be doing a job for a criminal. They're part of a job I got. I am trying to make some money and I want to deliver these packages. That are not suspicious in the slightest. If your hands weren't full, you'd facepalm. Why would you add that last part? Harper blinks at you. I mean, uh, uh, sounds fun! The Harpy chuckles, clearly none the wiser. <laughs> Can I help? Yeah, I don't know if that's the best idea. Aw, oh, come on! You scared I can do your job better or something, guy? I wouldn't blame ya. I mean, I've been all over this city. I know, like, the back of my wing. But that doesn't even really make sense. And hey, will you look at that? Harper's eyes lock onto the paper in your hand and she flies closer, leaning on landing on your shoulder to read Kylan's note. Your last delivery's in the same district as my as my last errand. Don't say. So you know where the deliveries are? Of course I do. I've been living in Arrowin for a long time, guy. I know my way around. She grins. Come on, let's stick together and I can help lead you so to your little address there. This means I'll also, I'll also get some interesting company on my way to my last stop. She brings her wing to her chin once more. Plus, I'm curious to learn a little more about you. It's not every day I get to meet someone new that's actually cool. I want to hear everything. <sighs> Alright, fine. Can't exactly refuse at this point, so... This is the arrangement. Okay. Uh, four homes south of blacksmith shop. Yep, let's go. Oh boy. All we have to do is just deliver some packages. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's so simple, Rex. You're overthinking it. You're overthinking it big time. Could not be more simple task. And look, you got help. It literally can't be easier. You know? It's just gonna be like handing people things. It's not gonna be weird whatsoever. You know? Let's see. Where are we heading? Harper seems like she knows the way, though. Oh, stop. It's not this person. <sighs> you and Harper hesitantly enter the narrow alleyway. The natural light of the sun begins to diminish behind the tall wooden roofs of the heroine businesses and homes. You look down at the address scribbled on the paper to verify your location. When you look back up, you notice the figure of a young woman leaning against a nearby wall, her arms crossed. Hey, that's the person you're supposed to be looking for? Harper asks, leaning on your shoulder and perching there. I have no idea. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt to ask. Hesitantly, you walk forward, approaching the young woman. 
when she notices you, you see her body visibly tense up, pulling her arms closer into her chest. She notices the packages in your hands and clears her throat. <clears throat> Are you, uh, you with Kylan? Uh, yep, yeah, uh, yep, yeah, that's me. Uh, he, he couldn't be here right now, but so do you have the stuff? She asks, wasting no time. The, the, the stuff. Yes, the stuff. She would grow vi vi visibly agitated by your confusion. If you're with Kylan, you must be here with the stuff, so where is it? Uh, uh... You glance down at the three packages Kylan gave you. Looking between the packages and paper with script- I hope my power doesn't go out. You glance down at the three packages Kylan gave you. Looking between the packages and paper with scribbled names and addresses written across it, you conclude which of the three must be hers. You gulp a bit. Well, she demands, what should you do? Are you really about to give potentially illegal substances to this woman? Chat. What chat? <laughs> I'm about to commit a crime. <laughs> this is an actively criminal. I'm, I'm, I'm a criminal. <laughs> I'm, 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 okay. All right. Let's just do it. Here you go. The young woman snatches the package away from you, hugging it close to her chest. She sighs in relief as soon as it's in her arms. Oh, thank the gods. She snaps her head back up at you, glaring. Don't tell anyone about this! I- Before you can even respond to her, the woman sprints away in a hurry. Harper huffs from your shoulder, shouting after her. You know, a thank you would be nice too. Jeez, some people these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people. Eh, uh, don't let your behavior get you down, Rex. What's the next address you gotta head to? Harper asks, turning back to your paper. Latona Gate, huh? That's gonna be backing up near the entrance. Maybe this person will have some manners. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I do not think it can get shadier than that. So, surely, it can only go uphill from here. It cannot be worse. It cannot get worse, right? I'm doing this during the day. Why am I doing this during the day? Well, that's why I'm doing this during the day, but I'm doing it. That's just one down. We've delivered one. We are solid. We are just clean right now. Okay. You're jinxing it? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing nothing of the sort. All right, I am, I am, uh, I am, what is the opposite of jinxing? I am not, I am anti-jinxing it. Bang. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, where are we going? <laughs> How do we go up? She really does know how to navigate this city well. I would have, like, it would have taken me twice as long to navigate this much distance. I would have, like, gone in circles, rotated around the same, like, corners, and it would have taken me the third go-around to realize that I've already seen the same corner three times. Oh, we're going up these stairs now. Cool. Hey! Didn't see you there, guy! What's good? Yeah. That was smooth. That one was smooth. Come on. Chat, come on. That, don't, you can't lie. That one is really smooth. I played that one off really well. Don't- oh, come on! You guys are a bunch of- you guys are a bunch of, of naysayers. That was beyond smooth. I dare say that was the smoothest anyone's ever been. Let's just uh, <laughs> keep going. Well, we're back here. I didn't get to walk around this place a bit. I guess we didn't walk around all of it. So where do we need to go? Oh, this the home? Uh, looks like it. You see, this is the door. You look up at the door to the home, glancing between it and the paper in your hand. Uh, is this the place, Harper? Sure is, the Harper responds. What, you think I can't read an address? I didn't say that, I'm just making sure. 
You raise your hand, knocking on the door loudly three times. You step back and wait for it to open. Moments of silence pass. Harper blinks at the door. Well, maybe no one's home? However, as you say this, you could faintly make you would faintly make out the noise of a lock unlatching. A door would creak open slowly, and the head of a man would peek out from behind it. He doesn't open the door fully, instead opting to hold it open a crack just to see who is outside. You can't make out any more of him than his face, which seems to be a bit red. <laughs> he clears his throat. How can I help you? Hi! Uh, I'm here with your package? His eyes light up slightly. Is it, is it from Kylan? Yup, that's the one! You withdraw the man's package, holding it out towards the door. The man's entire face lights up as he reaches an arm out from the darkness, snatching the package from your hands and pulling it into his home. You open your mouth to say something else, but before you could speak, the door slams close, leaving you, both you, and Harper outside without a thank you. Oh. All right, then. Come on, what's everyone's deal, huh? The harpy scoffs at the door, sticking her tongue out defiantly at the house. Huh, yeah, I wonder. Man, these guys are real downers, Harper frowns. Let's hope your last delivery ain't like these jerks. The harpy beams, however. We're gonna be headed up to Waterside Grove next. You'll love it up there. It's real nice for flying around, and there are plenty of pa the pretty paths to walk on. Come on, Rex. <sighs> That was worse. It was worse. I didn't even see him. He was an eyeball and a hand. That's all I saw. What was he doing in there? Why, 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 what was he doing? Why did he need What did I give him? What did I give him? You know, I'll never know. I don't even know. I can't even identify the person I just gave things to. Is that his home? I don't know. But we did it. Oh my gosh. What am I doing? This is insane. I'm losing it. I am actually losing it. Okay. 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 Ha! Ha! Ah! Harper. <sighs> so you and Harper begin to walk towards Waterside Grove. You can't help but hesitate. You've never done something like this before. Something illegal, that is. Are you really doing the right thing, perpetuating possible addictions? Or maybe you're not giving away substances but dangerous items or weaponry. Your mind begins to raise at the possibilities. Just what exactly are you promoting by delivering these by completing these deliveries? Harper notices your hesitation and frowns at you. What'd you stop for, huh? I uh The guilt of involving Harper starts to get the better of you. You didn't want her to join you, and yet here you are, two deliveries in! This couldn't possibly get any worse, could it? Hello? Harper flutters from your shoulder to look at you directly. What's going on in there? Harper... I haven't exactly been honest with what we're doing here. Eh? What's that supposed to mean, guy? She tilts her head, landing on the ground. Slowly, you find yourself sitting in front of her, placing the package between the two of you. Oh, about this job I'm doing. You gulp, rubbing the back of your neck nervously. This won't be an easy one to explain, but you can't keep doing this without being honest and getting to the bottom of what exactly you're distributing. I think I'm doing a job for a criminal. Come again. The Harper's expression goes completely deadpan as she stares at you. We might be giving out something... bad. What? The harpy puts a hand over her mouth at her outburst, looking around quickly before glaring back at you, her voice being getting a bit quieter to ensure no one else overhears. What? Isn't covering your mouth, like, unnecessary when you shout already? Don't change that subject! Did you just say you're giving away rated packages? Full of bad things, yes. Why didn't you tell me? She snaps. How did you even manage that? We parted ways for maybe 30 minutes, and you get a job with... with Nair Duels? I mean, it's not like I went out of my way looking for that kind of job. So what exactly were we just giving away to those two people before? Harper walks over to you, placing both of her wings on your shoulders. Or trying to. With her small size, a bit difficult for her to perform this action. Hang on. 
Was that why they were acting so weird? Probably. I don't exactly know what I was giving them. Slowly, Harper's gaze turns down to the package between you two. So... That package... Could be anything, yeah. And we don't know at all? Pretty much. You slowly turn down to stare at the package. You and Harper's gazes are fixated on the package for what feels like an eternity before you both look up at each other, talking at the exact same time. We should open it. Harper blinks in surprise. Well, we certainly agreed on that one pretty quick. I mean, I don't want to be giving out weapons or something, Harper! Then it's settled, then. There's another pause. You open it. ME OPEN IT! It's your job! I'm just an innocent bystander who you dragged into your funny business! You're the one who involved yourself! Yeah, because I didn't know you were working for a criminal! No harpy sighs. Just open it really fast, and if it's really bad, we'll call the guard. Deal? Okay. Deal. Get to the bottom of this. You lean over the package, trying to carefully unwrap it to reveal its contents. Harper would fly up to perch on your shoulder, her feathers shivering. I can't watch! She covers her eyes with her wings, but you can swear she's peeking out from past your fingers. You bite your lip, pulling the wrapping away from the package to reveal what's inside. Eh? Yeah? You and Harper both stare at the package contents in confusion. Harper blinks. Rex, that's bread. Yup. That is a loaf of bread. I can see that. Harper flutters down to the package, carefully using her talons to pull it open once more. A number of ingredients would tumble out of the, ba the package, such as an onion, a stick of butter, garlic cloves, and a bag of flour. You know, for criminal activity, this is pretty mundane. But I, I, I don't get it! I thought I was delivering something illegal! Well, lucky for you, last I checked, bread is totally within your rights to carry without a permit. <laughs> But th this doesn't make any sense. Just take it as the blessing that it is, Rex, Harper states. At least now you know you're not giving away something really bad. She sighs. <sighs> Maybe instead of just standing there with your mouth hanging open, we can go deliver it properly and just ask. A friend of mine always tells me there's no such thing as a bad question. Just stupid ones. I guess we could ask. Sure. Just make sure to pack it back up so they don't think we messed with their ingredients or anything, Harper states. Come on, this way. It's bread. And an onion. And butter. And cloves. And what the- well, why? Why am I living- okay, you know what? This makes no sense. None at all. Hold on. Uh, <clears throat> Hello? You approach the lake house hesitantly, glancing at Harper for confirmation. The harpy simply nods at you, flying over to the door and motioning for you to knock. You comply, walking forward and raising your fist, knocking on the door three times. You step back, waiting patiently for it to open, and after a moment, it would. A young woman stands on the other side of the door. She has fair skin and brown hair that curls over her shoulders. She tilts her head at you and Harper with a hesitant smile. <laughs> Hello there. Is there anything I can help you with today? Hi, uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, I have a package from Kylan. Oh, you do? She pauses. Hadn't realized he had hired someone new to deliver for him. You offer her the package and she accepts it with a small and respectful nod of the head. Thank you so much. I was actually just wondering when it would arrive. Hang on a moment. She stares at the packaging, fingers running along the edge of the wrapping. Has this already been opened? Uh... You look at Harper for help, but she looks away from you awkwardly, acting as though she didn't hear the woman's question. You sigh. <sighs> the, the truth is, you start, I wasn't exactly told what was in the packages. I got suspicious of what I was delivering to people, and your package was the last one I had to give away, so I looked inside. I see. The woman considers your answer. Can I just ask... Why did you just order some bread and ingredients from Kylan? Well, it's actually a bit silly, I think, the woman admits. You see, my husband works in the mines down at the Mr. Quarry. However, he was injured about a week ago. She looks down at the package. Due to his injury, he's been unable to continue his work. 
which has greatly increased the income in our household. It's become difficult to buy these ingredients. We spend the coin we have on our rent. So I reached out to Kylan for help. Help? I asked if there was a way he could deliver just some simple ingredients to me so I could make my husband a special dinner tonight. It's been some time since we've been able to sit down to a home-cooked meal. He's been so hard on himself lately, and I wanted to do something nice for him to cheer him up. She smiles at you. So, I really appreciate you bringing this to me today. Thank you. Wait, hang on. So, Kylan isn't, like, a bad guy? The woman blinks in surprise. A, a bad guy? Why would you think that? She holds the package close to her. Harper clears her throat, muttering at her breath. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Rex, come on. Why would you think that? Are you serious right now? The woman looks between the two of you before giving you a smile. <laughs> well... Either way, I'd like to thank you for delivering these goods. It means very much to me. You pause, your expression faltering. You stare at the woman for some time. Someone's, like, actually thanking you? It's not something you hear every day. She's grateful that you helped her. Wait, helped her? When's the last time you've actually helped someone? Did it always feel this good to help people? Would you be able to thank Kylan for me as well when you see him again? Uh, sure, yeah, 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 I can do that, no problem. Numa nods to you both. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening, both of you. And with that, she would walk back inside her house, closing the door behind her. Harper looks at you with a slight grin. I guess that settles that, huh? She says. I guess so. Helped. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up? Why are you stopping? As you walk up the path, you feel Harper adjust herself on your shoulder. Slowly, she flutters off her perch, her talons tightening her grip around their, her bags as she would begin to fly down the path on the right. Well, this is my stop, guy. On the subject of bread, I gotta make a stop at the bakery down the road. Oh yeah, you said your last errand was up there, right? So you remembered, huh? She smirks. Yep, my last stop and then I'm headed back home. Finally, am I right? Carrying these bags around all day has gotten tiring. Well, I thought you said earlier that they weren't all that heavy. A harpy frowns. Yeah, well, I see a lot of stuff. That's not the point. She huffs, closing her eyes and looking away from you. <laughs> now I'm just messing with you. <laughs> If I had to fly around with all those bags, I'd get tired too, you continue, agreeing with Harper. See? Exactly! Finally, someone that gets it, the Harpy states. Ha! You're not too bad, Rex. I'm glad I bumped into ya. <laughs> Thanks. We should hang out again sometime. Just maybe skip over the part where you tell me I'm helping you deliver illegal stuff. Yeah, it's fair. Guess I'll see you around. Harper states. She flutters up and down as if she were trying to wave while midair, before turning around to fly down the path on the right. You watch her go for a moment before looking up at the sky. The sun would be setting on the horizon, and slowly, the stars would become more and more visible. Night sky. It's beautiful. You haven't had the time to actually take it all in, but now that you do, it's a sight to behold. Oh, yeah. Look at all the stars. <laughs> this place is gorgeous. Look at it. So this is Waterside Grove. How many districts are in this city? I feel like I've only been in a small handful. Whoa. Check that out. Now that's pretty cool.
We should get back to Alice. <sighs> Until we completed the job. Delivered all three packages. What a beautiful city. Look at all those lilies. Leave out the Harper part. Good call. Huh. That was a pretty productive day, I think. What do you guys think? That didn't actually turn out to be, like, as bad. I wonder what all that's about, though. Just gotta head back down now. You know what? I'm already starting to get the hang of it. The hang of walking around. We go this way. This way. The staircase is right around here. Then we go this way. This way. Then here. And then it's there. And those are the stairs down to... What was it called? The farm marketplace. And then we make our way to the docks. I don't remember what the docks were called, though. I guess we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> Dang, it's like every corner you turn is just a gorgeous view in this city. We just need to cross this marketplace. So freaking cool. This way. And then... This way. We're looking for the square. I remember that. The big purple trees. I wonder what those are called. They're really pretty. Here we go. Yeah, it's right here. I'm just gonna walk around this one. There are the big purple trees. It was probably a faster way of moving through this district because that one felt a little slow. And we had to like walk around. Hello! But now we're here. Okay. Now this way. like a quite refreshing walk like that was just kind of sweet you know nice casual walk and it went on for a while this city's huge okay it was up here on the left somewhere it was one of these buildings not that one because this is the like warehouse i think i looked inside it's past these stalls is it here? Are they outside the front of it? No. I think it's a building after this. No. 
thanks to the building after this. No. Building out. No. It's this one. It's this one. Yes, it's this one. Huh. I did it. Yeah, that's right. I made it. What's up? You walk back through the tavern, finding a way to kind of land at Ellis's table. As you approach, you overhear pieces of their conversation. And then, the idiot picks up his sword and starts running at the Kraken. I'm talking dead sprinting in the rain towards this huge squid monster, Ellis exclaims. You're kidding. Are we talking about the same guy? Kylan raises an eyebrow. I'm serious. He starts dodging all kinds of attacks from its tentacles, and then guess what he does? He jumps onto its face and stabs it in the eye. That's insane. I know, right? I'm telling you, the guy's something else. I don't know whether to call him a moron or a genius sometimes. What are we talking about? Nothing! Ellis snaps at you. Nothing at all! When the heck did you get even get back, huh, moron? You notice that her face is bright red. Kylan chuckles from the other side of the table, resting his hands behind his head. Just now. I finished all of the deliveries. You did, huh? Kylan raised an eyebrow. Good to hear. See? Told you you could do it. Alice smirks. Yeah, yeah. Kylan waves her off. You know, I was wrong about you, Kylan. He pauses, narrowing his eyes at you. What's that supposed to mean? Well... I thought you were a bad person, but all those packages... You were giving away items to people who were in a tough spot, weren't you? Duh. He states, leaning onto his elbows. Hang on, wh what did you think I was doing? I thought you were a criminal or a, like, a, like a dealer or something. What? He, his eyes widen. Why the heck did you think that? Well, you and Ellis weren't exactly explaining anything to me. Why didn't you just tell me in the first place that you were helping people? Because we obviously couldn't just tell you what we were doing in case you decided to run off to a guard and spill the beans, you bongo! He tells you. We gotta keep some cards close to our chest, or every lieutenant in the Carpera district would know about my schemes. What's wrong with that? The guard's that bad? It's... It's not about the guards, really. It's the Commerce Guild. Kylan leans back. There is plenty of people in Arrowwind who struggle. I mean, everyone struggles at some point, right? I don't think there's a single kingdom in Mythos where people don't experience, uh, let's call it, financial difficulties. This leads to them being unable to buy daily necessities. Hygiene items, food, clothes, things like that. So that first person I met up with. Oh, right. She asked me to get her soap. Skylin explains. She didn't have the money to afford much besides food and rent, which meant her personal hygiene was suffering. Oh, so that's why she left so quickly. She was embarrassed. And she probably thought you knew what she was ordering and didn't want to stick around too long. Yeah, Kylan sighs. Uh, and what about the second guy? He came to me asking for some spare clothes. He was working at the ranch and his shirt got damaged. Didn't have another he could use, so... And he didn't have the money to go to the tailor. So he didn't open the door because... Oh! Yep. Kylan nods. Seriously, Rex, how much of this did you take out of context? Alice asks you. More than I want to admit. Look, what does that have to do with a, a, a guild? They call themselves the Gilded Collective. Kylan explains. Now, if you're one of those lucky merchants that can, be per that can purchase membership, then the Collective is your best friend. But to the rest of us, they don't exactly make it easy to get the items you need, especially if you're struggling financially. So you're getting the items to the people who need them yourself. Right, though it's not exactly that easy, he shrugs. Do I look like I have the money to afford all the supplies? Give it to less fortunate, I have to pull a couple strings. <laughs> Ellis chimes in. You see, Rex, Kylan works on the docks. He helps unload cargo from the ships and sort through sort delivered goods. From there, he reports any damage or missing items to the dock manager. Luckily for me, the dock manager also happens to run this tavern. Which the woman was in on it too? How else am I would I get my hands on the goods and the packages? Of course, it's still plenty expensive to me, but for a couple extra coins, Cassandra's willing to cover up any holes I make in the ledger, making it a complete report for the Gilded Collective, who are none the wiser. 
His jaw tightens. If they knew about any of this, they would make sure to count every coin and ensure that people are paying market price for all their goods. Fact is, with everyone going on, with everything going on right now, a lot of people wouldn't be able to afford that. So you're helping them with making deliveries. You really did me a favor getting those deliveries done for me. I mean, I can't exactly go around solving their problems and getting their goods to them when I have a job of my own, you know? So, Alice leans forward. Now that Rex finished up the job for you, what do you say on that long-term deal of ours? Kylan sighs. Since those people got the items they needed, and the guard didn't figure us out, fine, I will help you guys find work. <laughs> You're not too bad, Kylan. Thanks. Why did you think I was? That settles it then, Alice grins. Pleasure doing business with you, Kylan. She holds out her hand. Kylan scoffs, taking your hand and shaking on it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So, what now? Now? It's getting late, Kylan states, standing up. I don't know about either of you, but I'm heading home. We should probably get back to the inn, Alice nods. You still got the key, Rex? Yup. Got her right here. All right, then. Let's get going. Ellis nods her head before glancing towards Kylan one last time. I'll let you know when I've got another job, Ellis. Don't worry. Kylan states. Good. I told you where to find us, right? Wayfinders Rust, Latona Gate, room at the end of the hall. I got it. See you around, then. Huh. Nice. Wow. Where the hell is Scott? I guess he's. Oh. As you walk with Alice through the town, she nudges you with her elbow, chuckling. <laughs> Not bad, Rex. How are you feeling? Good. Your mind can't help but go back to that woman in Waterside Grove. You think of her smile, and how she genuinely thanked you. You can't remember the last time you had someone smile at you like that and feel so grateful for your help. It felt nice to help someone. Yeah? Alice looks up at you for a moment before lifting a hand to ruffle your hair. Well, get used to it, I guess, because there's going to be a lot more where that came from. Wait, what? Weren't you listening? You're working for Kylan now, moron. She grins. You're going to do more of those jobs and make help make us some money to survive in this city. Wait, me? What about you? I thought we were both working for him. Someone has to work out our finances and keep things organized, Alice explains. Plus, you remember when Ren had that gun to your head and I saved you? She steps in front of you, stopping you in your tracks. She puts her hands on her hips. I said that you'd own me. So now, time to pay up. Okay, well, this seems like a really long-term way of paying up. I didn't specify the terms of you being indebted to me. She shrugs. Point is, if we want to survive in this place, this is how things are going to operate from going forward. She smiles. So keep up the good work, all right? Our room at the inn relies on it. Oh, I'm already tired. Come on, moron. She chuckles. You'll have plenty of time to rest back at the inn. Alice begins walking off leading the way down the dark streets. You pause, casting one more glance at the night sky. You have no idea how you got here, and not a single clue what to do next. But, somehow, you feel like you're going to be okay. Guess who? Welcome back, Harper. How did those errands go? Good! I actually met someone new today! A silver-eyed dread with a magic gauntlet! Can you believe it? Pretty weird guy. <laughs> is that so? What is his name? He said his name was Rex. Apparently he's new to Erwin too. Crazy, huh? 
Rex? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah.